So, going live. Oh, I accidentally tapped the going live. So we're live now, by the way. So if, if, that, if that stool is the squeaky boy, then we're going to have to rearrange stools. Let's see how we do. Hi. Let's see how that does. If 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 the squeaky st uh, uh, camera, that one. If the squeaky stool is super bad, let us know, and we'll just change it out. We have we have more stools off off shot. The problem it's is they good. they all squeak as well. There's also a wheelie chair and a bin. Something can be arranged. My kingdom for a stool that won't just start squeaking after six months of use, and that doesn't cost a million pounds as yes, well. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, welcome. Yes. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Welcome to the show. We're only a couple of minutes late, but would you expect anything less from us these days? Precisely. And before we get too far into anything, let's do the thing, the thing we meant to do last week what? about telling people about the fact of liking and commenting, interacting with the content they want to see on YouTube in general, on this channel specifically, because then it will train YouTube to show them the content they want. If you don't like the live streams, don't tell us on this video. Go to another video and comment on that one. Specifically a repair one. The yes. kind of video that you want to see. Because then it trains YouTube that that's the content you interact with. That's the content you want to see. So it will show you that more by default. Yes. There's too many people that comment on the live stream. Well, there's not that many, to be honest. But for a while, there was, there was lots of people that would comment on the live streams going, Oh, you only ever do the live shows. And it's like... By commenting on that video, you basically said to YouTube, I want to see more live shows. Yes. That's the problem. So... Which wasn't what you wanted. <laughs> Indeed. So go go comment, like, etc. The content you actually want. All of that stuff. Exactly. But yes. Anyway, hello everyone. Uh, yeah, M1MO Gaming, TPM 2.0. Well, that therein lies one of the things that I want to talk about today anyway. Um, so, first, uh, uh, hello everyone that I can see in chat, Noldals, Dennis, hello, Bad Egg, Yate Computing, uh, Michael Casper as well. I also saw, right at the top, Nick Smith, welcome to Tier 1. Thank you for becoming a channel member. Much appreciated. What about a 24-hour live stream? <laughs> no. Just, just no. <laughs> right. What does I feel TPM like, stand? I feel like one of us would end up throttling the other one or something. <laughs> Probably. After tw certainly after 20 hours awake. Yeah. On camera. Hell, I, I start melting after four. Well, the longest streams I do are my game streams, Thursday and Sunday nights on Twitch. Um, uh, and generally speaking, when I get to four hours, I'm fried. Um, that I have to be really enjoying the game to be still fresh at the four hour marker. So yes. yeah, trusted platform module, that's it. Um, but yes. Anyway, let's talk about, let's let's do the headline topic first because um, uh, I want to talk about things because I want to make predictions. I want to make predictions oh, and yeah. stuff like that. So <clears throat> Windows 11, last, it was last week that I said I didn't care about Windows 11, wasn't it? Basically. Yeah. Also, I want to yeah. not have that between me and you. Yes, we do. We, yeah, that, that's... Uh, that doesn't need to be there at the moment. Anyway, um, last week I said I didn't care about Windows 11. Um, that's now covering the chat for me. How about that? It's not there like we, we spent 45 minutes setting stuff up and arranging and moving stuff to then go, oh, great, none of it works. We're, we're fiddling <laughs> with camera setup still. Last week we had the um, last week we had the, uh, the the Panasonic camera on for the first time. We got it on this week as well. We spent a load of time setting it up and then going, and then I basically said to to Caradog, I don't like this shot. No. I don't. Um, we we you know. So we've moved it in a bit closer. I'm still a little bit unconvinced, mainly because one of the problems with this shot, which is very much a streamer issue, is most of the time my eyes are looking at the preview and the chat. Yeah. And the problem is, is that most of the time when you're using a webcam, the camera lens is just above the preview and the chat so the audience can't see that you're look that you're not looking them in the eye whereas with this the camera lens is all the way up there and it's actually quite a bit away from us so yeah. right now i'm having a lot of I, i'm right now i'm feeling like i'm not looking at the audience and i'm looking over here so 
already I'm like, um, I'm not 100% convinced about no, this. No, absolutely. Yeah, like, are you getting the same feel? I have less of a concern of that because obviously I do almost all of my stuff with my camera there whilst looking at a screen there anyway. That's true, yeah. So it it's less of a thing to me. Um, yeah. And yeah, it, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. But I can kind of see where it's coming from. Um... Also, just kind of a case of, I don't know how we'd do it any differently with this specific setup. Yes. We'd need to change a lot of how this operates for it to fit. Yeah. Or failing that, it might work out better on the next one. So, uh, firstly, Chris Kingan, thank you very much for the $10. Hello from across the pond, Graham and Caradog. Hello, hello. Um, the next week, the setup we're going to do is we're going to go for actually what was the original plan for this room which is to have the camera over there pointing in at the desk because right now usually when i'm doing a repair video i would actually be sitting here i would be do i would be like this for a repair video and right now what we've done is we've got the monitors turned around so the camera's looking down the bench and then and then we're sitting back here um, now, this is fine. I like this bench setup because Caradog and I have got the bench between us, so we've got nice spacing and we can both look at the same thing without being buddy-buddy shoulder-to-shoulder, which, aside from social distancing, is just not very comfortable, whereas having being on two sides of the bench looking at the same thing is really nice. Also, um, also introduces the lean. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, uh, yeah, so I, I like this. However, um, the problem is, is that we've got to completely rearrange the bench every week when we do mm. the podcast, which I don't like doing. No, absolutely. It, it's because, the, yeah, my my, my, set, my setup, the reason why I use OBS, the reason why I use webcams, is all engineered to be open OBS, hit start recording. Yeah. You know, as soon as you have to start setting up for something, I'm like, that's too much trouble. I don't want to do that every time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but at any rate, so next week we're going to try and have the camera over there because that means that I don't, we can both be sitting on the same side of the bench, not as nice, but it means we don't have to change the bench setup. Mm -hmm. So yeah, at any rate, the point is we're still experimenting with the camera layouts and things like that. So if you're, if you're looking at any of this going, oh, this camera angle is a bit weird. Yeah, we're experimenting. We're figuring it out basically. Yeah, absolutely. And just kind of a case uh, of working out what works for whatever format we're actually trying to produce, mm. but also a case of what works in the space that is this room. Yeah. Because obviously it's a case of working out the space as in the room, the studio, and working out what you're trying to do in the space and make cameras work Yeah. in here. So yeah. Why is that hole in the wall next to Caradog? It, because it's a doorway. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm just going to point this out just to, just to settle you. This is a doorway over here. This goes through to the back. There is no door, though. There's just, yeah, there's just no door. There is also genuinely a hole in the wall here, which you guys might be able to make out. Oh, just. At some point, a yeah. cable came through. Um, or failing that, there's a missing, there's a patch on the wall here where it's not been painted because something was there where they were painting. There is no spoon, so there's yes, there's something there. Yes, right. That, anyway. that that is that is your assortment of holes for this yeah. week's two guys talk tech for YouTube <laughs> stats the web show. So whichever Thank you. whichever hole you you had your eyes set on, those are the holes explained. Yes. Um, so right, okay, that's that's all the technical setup aside. Let's talk about Windows 11. Last week I said I didn't care about Windows 11. I still haven't bothered downloading it because obviously there's still no official... I'm I'm kind of annoyed that, that it was all a bit of a nothing burger, really, wasn't it? Because they talked about philosophy and stuff like that, but they didn't give us... There was no public beta. There was no release date. There was no saying there was going to be a beta. There was, there was nothing tangible. There was nothing useful. Uh, we, I haven't watched it or read any content I, coming from it. I haven't watched it, but I, I will admit I didn't watch it either. But based on everything I've seen and all the summaries I've read, um, basically we're none the wiser. Um, the like it probably would have been more profound had the had the uh, the the leaked build 
and the screenshots not been leaked because this yeah. would have been our first eyes on it and then we would have been like wow the new style but because yeah, we've absolutely. already seen the new style they basically had nothing else to talk about um it was a bit of a iPhone 4 iPhone 4 leak moment where our, our Apple had to say stop us if you've seen this before because of the infamous iPhone 4 leak um but yeah, so TLDR, because there's no public beta or anything like that, we're kind of no further than we were before. However, because mm. it has been confirmed that is actually what it's going to look like, I want to say yeah. um, I like the way it looks. I'm not sure. I'm not convinced about the centralized uh, taskbar yet, but that's customizable anyway, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. The, the actual theming, though, the frosted glass, I'm super into it because I don't like flat design i don't like microsoft's flat design windows 10 i don't like the windows 10 flat design just because it just looks incredibly unfinished to me when it came out it looked fantastic but i was like this looks great because i was expecting them to finish it and then we kind of got five years deep into my into windows 10 and it was still just complete uh, it was it wasn't just flat design it was a lack of design it's kind of like mm. put it for me windows 10 is kind of like black text on a white page and calling that and calling that minimalist design i'm like no that's just no design that's just text on white kind i of guess thing. that's how i feel about windows 10 now it's not that bad i'm i'm exaggerating a little bit but that's where i'm coming from here and so with the the swing back to the whole frosted glass thing, which is very Vista-esque, I'm like, I like that. I think it looks nice. I haven't looked at anything at all other than hmm. some small screenshots on a phone and gone, hmm. okay. Yeah. I'm waiting because it's hitting the Windows Inside a Dev channel next week. Okay. I'm just going to run it. Yeah. And the... that will be my first impression. We'll be actually using it on hardware. Hmm. The new settings app, I think, looks great. The mm. new settings app looks like everything I wanted from Windows 10 settings because they've actually, you know, the categories you get when you open settings. Those have now been arranged into a list on the left and you click on your category and then you get the options for that category kind of thing. And they've all got nice icons on and stuff like that. And it actually looks like it's been designed, mm. in, you know, uh, and I, I, I really like the look. So of what they've just taken away the splash screen at the beginning effectively i guess yeah okay but it, I, it... I don't specifically use the settings mm. app from starting it settings and going in i just go into a setting a lot of the time because i'll be like clicking on an option and going show me the setting so it just jumps me into like personalize or sound settings or something yeah. like that so i don't specifically drill through it that way yeah so i don't particularly know well yeah, I mean, I like the look of it, but also I feel like at this, uh, I, I want to say from a customer perspective, I feel like it will lead people into what they're looking for a bit more because, but then on the flip side, the, the problem, uh, yeah, I, I, I want to say it should be more accessible to average users, but then on the flip side, average users are not even mm. trying. So it doesn't matter how much, how yeah. accessible you make it. Yes. So, yeah. Mm. It's a case that, Either way, it still requires reading and comprehension. Yeah. So that's a case of you aren't going to be able to make it sufficiently easy and user-friendly for that when it still requires comprehension and yeah. a desire to actually this is true. look at something. Yeah. So I, th I, th I feel like for the average user, obviously it's a case of most of the time there will be an error message that says you need to restart. And they'll go, I don't know how to fix this problem. Yeah. And it's kind of a case of, it tells you in the error message, so... Yeah. yeah. And that, that sounds like an exaggeration, but it's not. Yeah. Like, uh, the, the, the amount of times I have, every day I have people come into my shop and say, I've got this new phone, I don't know how to set it up. I'm like, it's an iPhone. And like, I'm just like, well, what's it saying? And, you, and, and they go sort of, well, and you open it up, and it's on the first run, you know, the welcome screen? Yeah. And, um, and, and you're just like, well... It's it's saying the license agreement, so you know, you click on it, I accept, and they're just like, okay, and it says sort of, you know, uh, do you want to turn on location um, so you can use GPS and stuff like that? And I'm like, okay, so it's asking if you want to use location. They're like, 
oh yeah, I want that. And I was like, okay, yes. And you go through it all and you're just like, you didn't even read this, did you? You, mm. did, you, you didn't look, you didn't yeah. even try. Yeah. You just went, I don't know how to use a phone. Yeah, and exactly. I, and, and, then, and then they say, oh, how much do I owe for that? And I'm like, nothing, because I just read what was on the screen. I'm not going to charge for that. Ooh, I'm going to get onto a customer ramp. I'm not going to do this. But yeah, so uh, I don't know. But either way, I feel like the new settings does look a lot more helpful. A couple of people saying sort of, oh, you know, they're trying to be, they're trying to be Macos. It does look very Mac-esque. I'll give you that. And I don't know how I feel about that because in a way I'm just like, I, I don't know what that means. I, I, Personally, I don't actually know what that means hmm. because to me, it doesn't look anything like Macos because I can maximize windows and I can minimize them in one go. Yeah. And I have snapping and tiling and a taskbar that functions. Yeah. I think and I have 3D acceleration it doesn't have to be blessed by Microsoft to work. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you what I I'll tell you what I think that means. Um number 1 at face value it's a case of you're absolutely right not really Windows is nothing like Mac OS just the way you use it they're night and day different which is not to say if you know one you don't know the other but the 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 theory of it because like Mac OS for a start runs the menu bar at the top which is a com it's different. It's different. But on the flip side, the way that it is similar is that they have definitely gone into a more colourful, more... Um, it, it, how do you describe Macos, man? I don't want to say Fisher-Price because I, <laughs> Fisher-Price would, would be a derogatory thing. When you say something looks Fisher-Price, you're saying it looks childish. And that's not it. But it definitely looks more friendly, more colourful, more um, mm. designed. Whereas, again, I... Windows 10 is a hyper-minimalistic uh, design. See, I'm on the flip side and I'm still like, there are too many colours in Windows 10. I don't like it. I still don't like it. Because I'm still like, there's too much stuff and noise. Yeah. See, if, if that makes I, sense. I, I, I feel like... Yeah. Not not necessarily there needs to be less stuff. There needs to be far less noise. I still feel like there's way too much noise in an awful lot of the options and settings and configurations. And I things. agree with that. I think which is I think is possibly a slightly different argument. Yeah. But I feel like there's I... a bit too much noise and happeningness. And yeah. I'm just like that's too much. Yeah. See I I don't fully agree with... Again, I, th I think you're right where you're kind of arguing a different point there, but I, I see what you mean. I mean, if we just switch to desktop capture for a sec, just so we're looking at the Windows 10... Hang on a minute. How can I set this up? Let's minimise this. So we've got Windows 10 settings here. Let me just bring this into view a bit more. So... Um, oh, I've been cut in half. Oh, Hi. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. <laughs> All right, hold on, hold on. There we go. Oh, there we go. Now we just can't see what we were looking at. I have been embiggened. Yeah, oh, whatever. Windows settings over here. So, uh, like, if we give an example, if we go over to personalization, so we've got personalization here, and I'm going to have to move this. This is terrible. There we go, that'll do. By noise, one of the things that I agree is what, all of this, basically. This is all yeah. clutter. This is all clutter. Like, we've got help from the web, how to change my desktop background, how to find new themes how to get new wallpapers every day from Microsoft. Just like, this is all junk. None of that needs to be I there. would contend that where it says get new wallpapers from every okay. day from Microsoft, if you were to... That should just be an option. If yeah. you click on background where it says yeah. slideshow, just click on that drop down, yeah. and then instead of it having the options that it's got, it just says new wallpaper every day. Yeah. Or something like that. That's right. Or like Microsoft's Microsoft curated yeah. wallpapers. And the problem is... This sort of stuff is everywhere in Windows 10 settings, these related settings, so high yeah. contrast settings. It's just like, Why isn't the high contrast setting just there? Just there, yeah. That's exactly kind of my thing. point. This is what I say when I say that, we, that Microsoft never finished settings. Yeah. Because when this, all, when this was all in the beta, I was like, oh, this looks promising. I love the new settings app. It's, it's so yeah. great that they're actually overhauling the control panel. Mm. But then the problem is, is it just, as I say, the years went by and I was just like, so you're going to finish this, right, Microsoft? It was like the heckin' Anakin and Padme meme, where, you know, where Microsoft were just like, here's the new settings, and Padme is just like, 
awesome. That's going to look great when you're going to finish it. And you're going to finish it, right? You know, <laughs> so they never finished it. I mean, at least we got some icons on the left here. Yeah. But like, for, and that that's fairly recent. For years, yeah. there were no icons here. It was just flat text. That was which, 1909, yeah. I think, wasn't it? Yeah, which is so, yeah. relatively recent. Um, yeah. And so before then, there was no icons there, which just... And that just made it very, very sterile and, again, unaccessible, um, in my opinion. And again, you know, just like, again, for ages, I don't think there were even icons here either. So, you know, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. And the new Windows 11 settings... Um, the new Windows 11 settings are completely different from that in that it's actually set up and laid out properly, yeah. which I think is a big welcome return to form. Uh, I think that yeah. gives us something that's much closer to what the Windows 7 control panel was, which is, for better or for worse, what people want. I feel, in a way, also, Microsoft is now allowed to make it like that because they've migrated everyone to 10 mm. and kind of you have to make these microscopic steps to get people to upgrade and change and so on even when it's free yeah and they kind of have to do these microscopic steps and they couldn't do it in build updates because people would just kind of go oh no my windows has changed or did you do something no i didn't do anything well, you, you didn't do that. a big build update Mm. No, no, definitely didn't do a Windows update that took 30 minutes. Mm. Oh, actually, maybe I did. Yeah. Thanks. I don't know. So it's See, kind of a case of they can and they can't. But... Yeah, I was going to say, you say that, but now the the upgrade to Windows 11 is going gonna, is gonna to look completely different. But um, it's also going to be called something different. That's true. And I think yeah. it's a point of, to a degree, yeah. Microsoft shot themselves in the foot by kind of saying that they weren't going to do that. And they should have just kind of gone Windows 10, and then called it, and then when the first build mm. update came out, they could, should have just called it something like Windows 15 11 or something like that. And just well, forcibly yeah. named the OS something different each time. That's so a, they could yeah. have wide sweeping changes and people would at least be remotely aware. Mm. Or, not necessarily, that, that, that's the funny I, thing. I people know. say sort of, oh, they're trying to be like MacOS. It's just like, that's not a bad thing because Apple has that exact freedom because their operating systems are literally called um, Mac OS, you know, uh, 10.x, you know, and they've gone from 10.1 all the way up to 10.16 or 10.17. Although yeah. I think that I, th I think the latest version of Mac OS is actually leaving that naming convention behind. Yeah. But certainly for the past 10 years, that's what they've been doing, which has given them the exact freedom that you're talking about. Yeah. It's given them the freedom to make uh media you know they're doing small changes at a time so they don't culture shock people but they are able to make notable changes because it's got a new version number and a new code name you know um they went through all the big cats then sierra high sierra mojave mm -hmm. um uh maverick well mavericks mojave whatever i've forgotten them now because i don't care about max anymore um mojave <laughs> Oh, Mojave. The, I had this one customer once who, every time they came in, they said, I got Mojave, and I'm like, it's Mojave, it's a desert. <laughs> and it, every time they came in, they said Mojave again, and I'm like, Mojave. Mojang? Yeah, and I'm just, and I had to tell them every time, they were like, oh, I don't know, and I'm like, I've told you five times. This also, it's a freaking desert. I was going to say, this isn't me being a dick about it, it's an actual place, it's a <laughs> desert, it's a geographical location. <laughs> this uh... isn't a tomato-tomato thing. There is a right way to say it and a wrong way to say it, and you're saying it wrong, you know? <laughs> but, well, whatever. Mojito. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marcos Mojito, that would have been a better one. That would have been what Google would have done. Anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, at any rate, that's the funny thing. But okay, anyway, enough of the looks and the philosophy of it, though. But that's what they've announced with the philosophies. There's bits of it that I like and the bits of it that I'm like, eh. but the, the bit that I do want to talk about now, are you, has, has your leg gone to sleep from trying not to move? My, my leg just randomly went, no, I'm very unhappy with this situation. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, okay. You but, Continue. I will just boom from the side. Get get the wheelie chair 
and just and just and I'll I'll I'll, I'll lower mine with just you. Just get the wheelie chair and sit like this. Yeah, and we can, we can both do a laid back stream. We can both be just back here. All right, Caradog has limped away to go and get the other wheelie chair. The wheelie chair is a bit more comfortable, but the gas strut in it is gone, so it's about two inches off the ground. I don't have good chairs in here because I perch. I'm a percher. Like, it, it, just so everyone knows, the reason why I don't care about chairs is because I'm on a stool at the moment, and nine times out of ten, when I'm sitting on a stool, let me come a bit back so you can see. I will quite happily just, I will quite happily just sit like this, or I'll be like, I'll, I'll, I'll be doing this. I'm one of those. I, I sit on desks like this. You know, I'm a percher. That's what I do, so I don't care. <laughs> I'm Caradog. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. <laughs> Caradog lives down there now. <laughs> He's probably a bit too close to the mic, though. You might have to back up a bit. <laughs> All right. Um, get some bean bags. That's a wicked idea. But no, <laughs> that would be cool. Um, where were we? Right. OK. Um, yeah, we we're talking about philosophy and stuff. So I want to talk about my predictions now and the bit that everyone's banging on about TPS. No, TPM. Yes, TPM. TPM. PMS? No, that's something else. TPM. Um, so obviously the, the minimum requirements came out and it said TPM 2.0 and everyone lost their minds. Um, then it turned out to be a soft floor and actually it was TPM 1.2. Yeah. And it was TPM 1.2. And everyone was, and then people got slightly more relaxed because there is software TPM built into um, uh, Ryzen, all of the Ryzens and intel 8th gen onwards i think it's anything with intel trusted platform module 2.0 and newer which i think equates to 8th gen and newer yes but gen, it's yeah. possibly a case that i haven't looked but it's yeah. possibly a case of like the intel pro series okay might have had the might... trusted platform yeah. module 2 there earlier might, than 8th there might, gen. There might be some skylights. But there might be it. a couple of outlayers yeah. out there. Yeah. So the point is, so then everyone lost their minds because, uh, firstly, apparently the Ryzen 1st gen, although it has FTPM, is a bit sort of, eh. Uh, um, and so everyone's losing their mind over TPM. However, here's my prediction, is that TPM is going to be OEM only. And here's, here's my rationale. Here's what I think. I think it's going to be OEM only. So if you're an OEM or a system integrator, you need to, your systems have to have TPM um, to meet the minimum requirements for Windows yeah. 11. Yeah. Now there's, and people are going, you're wrong because there is a uh, a minimum requirement. There's a, does my, will my Microsoft run Windows 11? Will my Microsoft? There's a, will my PC run Windows 11 tool out there from Microsoft? But A, those have historically been terrible, haven't they? Yeah. Which is the point that I've been banging on it. Yeah. Literally everyone is. In, in, They've never worked ever. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I could probably pull up the Windows 8 one, run it on any computer that's here, yeah. that's running Windows 10, and it would go, this is not compatible. Why? Reasons. Yeah. And so, Microsoft, Microsoft has never cared. Yeah. They just need to make sure that anything it says yes to will absolutely 100% run. Yeah. That's all that it needs to do because it needs to work in the enterprise space where someone says... Oh, Microsoft, you said this tool would work with this computer and we bought 50,000 of them and it doesn't. Yeah. That's the only situation they care about. Yeah. So, so yeah, the the Microsoft minimum spec tool thing, I think that's hogwash. Um, and I think the reason why they're giving these TPM minimum requirements is... So, again, in that keynote, Microsoft talked a lot about philosophy and uh, the philosophy of their design and what Windows 11 is going to be about. They are going to want BitLocker as standard turned on by default. Yeah, that's absolutely. what they want. And for and for a for the best BitLocker experience, you want TPM. It's not yeah. it's not critical, but that's what you want for the best experience because yeah, then absolutely. you have keyless full disk encryption, which yeah. means they can bang the security and privacy drum, which yeah. is what they want to do. Yeah. Um, now my prediction is that. Um, you will be able to say, say, I don't want to use BitLocker. And that TPM requirement disappears. Doesn't need to be TPM 2.0, doesn't need to be 1.2. Yeah. If you're not running BitLocker, you don't need TPM. Yeah. And I think BitLocker is going to be optional. 
but Microsoft don't want to do say that. Microsoft want to talk about what they want people to be running, and they want you yeah. to be running BitLocker logged into a Microsoft account with yeah. a TPM 2.0 chip. Yeah. That's what they want. Yeah. But that's the thing. Getting to you know, with having TPM on everything from the top down uh, for everyone who's going to run Windows 11 mm. f for a lot of enterprise and business spaces, that's a freaking tall order. I, think. I don't know. Oh, yes, it is because computers have been historically misconfigured. Yeah. Um, however, from a hardware functionality point of view, no. Not I mean, it's not difficult to achieve, but it's a because case, but... the vast, vast majority of yeah. laptops have had standalone TPM 2.0 modules in them. Yeah, laptops for certainly. Ages yeah. and an awful lot of enterprises using laptops. Yeah. Certainly with the result of last year. There's certainly going to be a lot of workstations and cus you know, and stuff like that out in the work in the business yeah. space. And that's and this is the thing is they can say that they want this on OEM moving forward with yeah. no trouble at all. Yeah. It's kind of like it's the same as with the UEFI standard. A lot of people, when they heard that it needed to be UEFI, it's just like, yeah, who cares? That's basically anything 2012 onwards or 2013, 2013 onwards, 2012, 2013, something remember. like that for UEFI. And it's just like. Yeah, so you're talking anything made within the last decade. Yeah. And if it's more than a decade old, then, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be that guy that says who cares about it if it's more than a decade old. Mm. But at the very least, when it's more than a decade old, it's unreasonable to expect someone to support it. Yeah. So in which case, you carry on running Windows 10. Yeah. So the UEFI because thing... Windows yeah. 10 is still, at minimum, getting security upgrades until 2025, which means at that point it'll be 15 years old. Yeah. Something that doesn't have UFI will be 15 years old. Yeah, that's right. So it's right. a case of, personally, I don't expect Microsoft to support, as mm. in guarantee will work, stuff that's more than two or three years old from the release of the OS. Yeah. Saying, saying we're not going to stop you from using not an older stuff yeah. is a massively different thing to we officially provide support yeah. and guarantees of fixes. That's right. That's what we're talking about. And them more... supporting it is them saying we guarantee we'll fix bugs with this. Yeah, and that's the thing. And on top of that as well, that, that 2025 date for Windows 10, I still haven't had anyone give me a straight answer to this, but I've asked a couple of people, what level of support does that mean? Because... End, of, end of support. As in nothing, dead, dead in the ground. Oh, that, that, is, XP. that is red support. As yeah. in it is XP. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. But I... that's also the date that Microsoft gave us in 2015 when they launched Windows 10. It's Fair exactly enough. the yeah. same date. Because I was going to say Microsoft traditionally have had the, the group have had green, yellow and red support. And there's traditionally been so green support is feature updates. Yellow, so, you know, we're actually working on and actively trying to make the system better yellow support is we'll fix known bugs in the system so we're not make we're not trying to we're not adding any features but if there's a problem or a known bug we'll fix that yeah exactly. and then red support is we don't fix any bugs if you find a bug tough luck but if we find a zero day security exploit yeah. we will fix that yeah exactly and then once red support is over that's it you're now a virus magnet yeah um so I, I was wondering which level that was. But if that's red support, okay, that kind of surprises me that that's red support. Even though they said it would be, that's however... What, yeah, I'm, I mean, that's what they've said for five yeah. years. I'm going to bet... Six years, sorry, because that's 2015. Yeah, I'm going to bet zero dollars that that date will get pushed back. I don't think it will for anything that we have now. Hmm. I think possibly if it does, there'll be a new build of Windows 10 in 2025 that pushes it back if yeah. that makes sense i don't think nothing that is out today will be supported in 2025 i don't think agreed i think agreed. then if it does get pushed back there'll be a new build in 2025 it is a new effectively lts build yeah i Something believe like that, that a specific build like that yeah um and it's intentionally hobbled hmm. Because Microsoft are actually fairly aggressive with dropping support for old builds of Windows 10. Because like 1903 yeah. is out of support, isn't it? I think uh, I think 1903 is out of support. One if you're running, <sighs> I think if you're running 1903, you get warn you get nag messages saying there are no security updates. You need to update Windows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yes, but 18 1809 is still supported. Ah. Uh. Because um, it, the build support window depends on yeah. which 
build it was kind of thing. Yeah. It's not a hard and fast X number of months or anything like that. Yeah. Because it depends on what the build was released as kind of thing. Yeah. Because it's like, I think it's 1809 is still supported because it's the Enterprise Stable Ring yeah. update. Because there is a specific update ring you can select on um, Windows Server to push to the machines yeah that is like the the hyper stable the 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 very slow branch kind of thing yeah and i think that is the cut i think that build has just been replaced by 21h1 i think or it might have been um 2004 i can't remember mm. it was one of those um just replaced the the previous stable one so now that old one will now get dropped off mm. because it'll be a case of there are now two current supported ones and things like that so yeah it very much depends yeah on where it kind of falls and whether it's an lts build or not yeah effectively that's right yes at any rate though the fact that they are actually dropping support for old builds which i mean i guess we're talking about like 1819 which is 2018 2019 that kind yeah. of area so but, you know, so obviously that was quite a few years, those are quite a couple of years old now, but then they're yeah. only, what, two or three years old, which is not a huge amount of time in the grand scheme of things. No. So Microsoft are being fairly aggressive with chopping off old builds. So that that does imply that the 2025 hard deadline is entirely believable, that they're actually serious about it. They're yeah. like, no, it will end support in 25. There yeah. won't be extensions. We're setting that date now. You got five years do not say we didn't warn you. Yeah. We've been through this before with the previous systems. Yeah. We've done it all before. This yeah. time, the year is 25. We will end support. So that seems reasonable. Yes. But, be. yeah. Mm. However, um, this uh, time, no further. Here, we must draw the line. <laughs> this time, no further. Every time we fall back. <laughs> yes. Yes. But yeah. Um, Ima imaginary points, internet points for those who understand the butchered reference. Yeah. But yeah, um, uh jose if i'm pronouncing that right uh or josie sorry if i've got that wrong 7700k yeah. isn't supported that's the thing i think it will be i no, I... it it is not supported it may run on it but it is not supported hmm. this is an important point of accuracy in language yeah, supported okay. means microsoft will fix bugs with it yeah if you it have will, a problem it will you. run on it is a completely different thing yeah windows will run on a thermostat it doesn't mean yeah. much supports it that's true it's a question of if, if you're having problems and you get on the phone to microsoft and say i have purchased a license of windows 11 and i'm having difficulty making it work um if you have a supported system then microsoft is obligated to help you solve your problem yeah whereas if you're not on a supported system they're not obligated to help you solve your yeah. problem. Yeah. So yes, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. However, I absolutely believe that Windows 11, without ver with little to no hassle, yeah. I believe Windows 11 will run on that 7700K. I, I yes. find it very hard to believe that you're going to have to jump through hoops to make it work on a Skylake. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, 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 absolutely. So it's a case of, um, yeah, just like um, you can't install Windows 10 on the very first FX boards by default mm. but you can manually load the SATA controller driver and it starts working yeah stuff like that that's what i'm imagining it will be mm. a case of it's not supported but you can make it work yeah. so it's a case of that's yeah. the, that's the kettle of fish the interesting thing is though we're, we're seeing the cost of tpm modules go sky high in some places where yeah, yeah of course but that's what yeah. happens on ebay when a product starts increasing in sale volume oh that's yeah that's how ebay sale bots work oh I'm, yeah i'm amazed by people being surprised by oh this. yeah no i'm, I'm not I'm no no not, not you here. yeah i'm amazed that the populace is surprised by this yeah when sale volume increases on an item on ebay its price goes up that's how ebay bots work absolutely and that's how they've worked for 10 years I, I think the point is what this shows though is that everyone is panic buying tpm modules believing that if they don't have a tpm module they're not going to be able to run windows 11 and let me Which put it this way. might be true. We have had no confirmation yeah, one yeah, way or the other. But again, to clarify, this is my prediction. Yeah. Um, and, the, you know, this is my prediction based on gut feeling, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, however, let me put it this way. I It wasn't last... It was on thir Wednesday or Thursday night um, when, when this came out, when this was announced. I quickly bought a TPM module on Amazon to get one on order, thinking, ah, I'm going to make a video about TPM modules. Yeah. I've cancelled that order because A, it wasn't going to be dispatched for like another two weeks or something like that. 
um, and B, yes. I'm looking at this and immediately going, this is a nothing burger. Maybe. And, and, See, and, I think and, you and, should have got it because I think you would have got a lot of views out of it. Because there will be a lot of people who are paying zero attention to what they're actually being told. Yeah. I don't know. I also I, get the feeling there are an awful lot of people looking for things to complain about with this. Yeah. Which I, is I, the same every time there's this, a Microsoft see, announcement. Yeah, see, this is the thing. It's like, yeah, I get views on it, but I don't want to rush out and make a video about TPM and then it'd be a big nothing burger. Like, I want to basically... Well, yeah, but if, what I'm saying is I want to sit back and say, I told you so, when no one needs TPM. Sure, but making a generic video going, this is TPM, this is a TPM module, this is how you can add it to your motherboard, yeah. this is how you can turn it on. You don't have to talk about Windows 11. Yeah, this is true. That's that's more what I meant. Yeah, that's Just true. as an educational piece on what is TPM and why the hell is it suddenly something people are talking about. Yeah, that's true. And you know what? That's relevant now because there's loads of people in chat going, what, the, what is TPM? What are they talking about? Yeah. So TPM is Trusted Platform Module. So here's the thing. If you want to do full disk encryption, um, or, well, when you're doing encryption, um, there is, right, I do... Cut in if I say something incorrect here because you know more about you know more about cybersecurity than I do. And if uh, Teltac is around, which I haven't seen him, but if Teltac is around, he actually is educated in cybersecurity. He is a he did forensic uh, compute. He did security forensics or he whatever. Did something. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so basically, if yes. you want to do encryption, you in, you encrypt your data. You scramble your data. Um, and then, see, Caradog has just handed me the Wikipedia page. But yes. I'm going to try and explain it my first. Oh, yeah, yeah, first. absolutely. Yeah. No, but it was just a case of just so you don't wander okay, off. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you encrypt Warrior. your data and you have to have a key, which is the key to unlock that data. So obviously you have a key to your key. So who do you trust to store that key? Now, or how do you, who do you trust with the recovery key to access it should the password be lost? Now, if you're doing like BitLocker, one way of doing it is you can back up those keys into your Microsoft account. However, a TPM module is, is a separate small bit of hardware that's got a, a controller chip on it that is plugged into the computer that is responsible for storing those keys in a secure manner. And this means that if your computer has that specific TPM module connected to it, like not that model, that exact one, then that computer is trusted to open and unlock the encrypted drive. When the encrypted drive launches, it says, who has the key to unlock me? If the TPM module is there, the TPM module goes, I'm here, here's the key. Yeah. So you have keyless encryption. And if that module is fiddled with, or if the drive is taken out of that computer and connected to a different system, when it boots up, it's gonna say, my TPM module isn't here, no one has the key, we're locked up. So that's what the TPM module is doing in a very, very 30,000 foot overview. Yeah, and it, is, it is a place for storing the key for yeah. encryption. It now, doesn't do the encryption, it doesn't process encryption, all it does is key exchange. Yeah. It, it stores the key effectively and exchanges it with the thing that wants the key and to know about the key. So it does that. Um, and there have been three revisions of it, I think. That sounds appropriate. There's been a 1.0, a 1.2, and a 2. Yeah. Um, and oh. basically it's a case of it doesn't particularly matter which version you've got yeah. right now um, because it will function almost identically. However, it's a case that obviously going forward... Microsoft are saying that they would like stuff to support TPM2. Yeah. And only TPM2. Which makes sense because that's the current version. Exactly. So, yeah, so that's kind of where we are with that. And it's a case that the vast majority of laptops have had TPM built actually into the motherboard, as far as I'm aware, and had yeah. a specific TPM chip on the board as opposed to having a header for it. Yeah. Um, and... However, for desktop motherboards... For some reason or other, most consumer desktop motherboards don't have it. However, most boards, um, if I cut over to this board here that I've got, you've got a little header on the motherboard here that's called JTPM1. This header, this is where you plug in your TPM module. 
I'm making sure I'm looking at the right camera. Oh, we haven't got any live cameras now anyway. But you'd have a small module, small circuit board, about that big, um, that plugs directly into the board. Um, and that provides a TPM module to the board. So when you go to eBay or Amazon and you search TPM module, you'll see a small circuit board with a header that will plug into that point on your motherboard. And so that is what everyone is talking about. That's what everyone wants on the on their custom built desktops. Absolutely. So, um, so these these that's the TPM module that everyone is scalping at the moment. Or what? Sorry, I'm not scalping. That's not what's happening here. That's the TPM module for which demand and price is suddenly skyrocketing on. Yeah, because no one's cared before today. Yeah, kind of because thing. until now, no one cared about TPM. Now suddenly, uh, it, people do care. But as I say, my prediction is that on your, con on your consumer custom-built computer, I don't think you're going to need it. Um, now, you could put one on there and it would yeah. be rad because then you could run BitLocker keyless and it would mm -hmm. be awesome. Absolutely. And there's plenty of good reasons to run it. But I yeah. don't think you'll need it. That's my prediction. No. And also, from the little I know about FTPM mm. or firmware TPM, yeah. it's a case that uh, it means that you don't need it at all because, obviously, the CPU has a secure enclave yeah. to run the key exchange and stuff in. And on AMD systems, that is called FTP in the BIOS. And on Intel, it's called PTT. Is what I've heard. Oh, right, okay. I've not seen what it's specifically called yeah. on the motherboards, but I know it's yeah. called FTPM because it's firmware TPM. Yeah. Within On AMD systems, if you drill into your BIOS, it's called FTPM. And on Intel, I believe they call it PTT. Don't ask me what it stands for. No idea. Someone in the chat might know. However, um, yeah, FTPM for AMD, PTT for Intel. Um, if you've got 8th gen or newer or Ryzen or, Ryzen or newer, you've got a... Uh, a firmware TPM yeah. built into your CPU. Now, again, <clears throat> though, support for this seems to be a bit unknown at the moment. Word on the wire is that uh, although Ryzen 1000 has FTPM, apparently that doesn't work. But the issue is, is yeah. that, again, because Microsoft announced so little this yeah. week, we actually don't know. There's so much speculation everywhere at the moment. No, And there's no hard information on yeah, what we absolutely. actually need. Mainly because there's no part, there's no beta. When we actually get a beta version, I think we'll probably start getting some actual hard Maybe. answers. See, I think we're going to have two very different circumstances. Mm. Where we're going to have, obviously, if you're just installing Windows from an ISO or something, there's going to be a very different set of requirements yeah. to whether you're buy to buying a computer new with windows 11 on yeah and i think we're going to have massively different requirements like i think windows 11 is probably going to run on two gigs of ram on a 32 gig hard drive it will run mm. it is not compliant with the minimum specifications yeah but it will function kind of thing yeah um so obviously if you are an individual a home user who wants to manually upgrade stuff and install isos manually doing fresh installs it will work yeah because again we've got to remember, I imagine yeah because again we've got to remember that part of the reason for minimum requirements is to push up the bar for oems because yeah. um many of you in the chat you may or may not have seen but there still exists in the wild many of them i've got one on the shelf somewhere i'm deliberating whether i'm going to go and pick it up or not but the 32 gigabyte emmc netbook yeah. so case in point the hp stream 7 or the hp stream 11 as well you get these poxy little netbooks with a potato cpu in and 30 to, uh, 32 gigabytes of onboard storage in the shape of emmc which is basically a soldered on sd card um and they are still out there you can still go and buy them today they're awful awful yeah. laptops but the problem is they're the cheapest laptops money can buy so people go out and they buy them because yeah. they're like i'm poor i'm going to buy the cheapest laptop i can find and these things are horrendous and should not be on sale yeah. But the minimum requirements for Windows 10 is 32 gigabytes. Yeah. So HP can sell these laptops and they can say, well, it meets the minimum requirements for Windows. Yeah. Now, the thing is, with Windows 11, if Microsoft set the bar for the minimum requirements higher, they say, no, yeah. it must have 64 gigs, must have TPM 2.0, etc. Yeah. You push up the bar and you eradicate these shit laptops. Yeah. So you make it so HP cannot sell those laptops. So Microsoft stop getting 
because Microsoft take a lot of the flack for this. People go, oh, I got a Windows 10 laptop. It was awful, yeah. much slower than my Windows 7 laptop yeah. because they bought one of these poxy netbooks. Yeah, absolutely. And Microsoft take the flack for that, not HP, despite yeah. the fact that it's 100% HP's fault. Yeah, exactly. You know. So it's a case that I, to a degree, I think the minimum, the minimum, what I, what I will call in a clumsy term, the minimum OEM specifications yeah. are still too low. I think the minimum mm. OEM specifications should have been higher. Yeah. Certainly on forcing storage space and forcing processors. It's basically, it's a case of they should have mandated what is a 10th Gen i3. Yeah, I think basically. I agree with putting in a minimum uh, a minimum requirement for CPUs as well. Yeah, especially well, certainly also, a higher one than it is. Yeah, they also need a quantifiable number as well because the problem is is that if you just say dual core processor, well, the AMD E1 is a dual core processor, exactly. yeah. but it's also one gigahertz boost. Yeah, dual core processor with an IPC of my wristwatch. Yeah, um, and this this is a fitness band. So that's saying a lot, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So it's just like, this is the problem. If you say minimum requirements is a dual core processor, that's not saying much, guys. Yeah, that's exactly. the problem. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So this is the thing. Yeah, exactly. So I think, I, th I feel to a degree that the minimum spec increase was not aggressive enough. Mm. Um, but again... Uh, the, the, again, just to reiterate again, the, we say it was not aggressive enough, but we have to bear in mind this is for OEMs, not yeah. for what you, the person who has a custom-built gaming rig, require. Yeah. There are two completely different fields that we're talking about here. The enthusiast space, yeah. completely different animal from OEM space. Yeah. Completely different. I mean, proven by the fact of last, last week we installed XP on a... Uh, i7 4790K, yeah. a processor that wasn't even dreamed of when XP dropped support. Yeah, kind of thing. So it's a case of it's a completely different environment and animal, and it's a case that I'm not saying that the minimum specification in the sense of the absolute minimum it runs on mm. for me, for you, for the person watching should be forced to be higher for no reason. Yeah. I'm saying the minimum standard of machine that is sold is compatible with 11 should be higher. Yes, agreed. Also, so, uh, Piero, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, no. I just read the message that you're apologizing for, and I'm just like, oh, no. Would you like to upgrade to an FX? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Not shaming. Look, people got what they got. They you work with what you got to work with. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's be realistic. You know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd say no hate. You know, not not every not everyone's made of money. Not everyone can just go out and buy expensive stuff. However, oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, no, no. But that, I... that doesn't mean that the E1 is a good processor, though. Yes. So yeah, <laughs> there is a large difference between mocking the processor because it should not have been released. Yes. And mocking someone for having it. Yes. And I never intend to mock a person for what they own. Simply the item for its existence. Yes. Because why? Mm, mm, mm. It annoys me that AMD made it. And then it annoys me that OEMs picked it up and went, this is good enough for us to sell. We are happy to put our name on products with this in. Yeah. I'm like, R really? Yeah. D -d -d this, oh. This is the problem is that um, oh. a, a lot of people don't realize that the cheapest, the cheapest computers that money can buy are literally not fit for purpose. Like, if you go out and you buy the cheapest car that money can buy, if you go and buy, you know, a stupid Fiat 500 Twin Air or something like that, um, Do you know, know how much they cost now? I'd... They're nearly £15,000. No! Yeah. Good grief. Well, years ago, when I was working, uh, when I was a contractor for my old boss, um, <laughs> in joke, um, he bought, a, uh, he bought a, a Rover City. Uh, and at the time, that it was a really... A what? Those things, Rover City. I've never um, even yeah. heard of it. You're blessed. <laughs> They're awful. It was like six thousand pounds brand new. So this thing is cheap. Wow. And the dashboard was made entirely of this plastic. You know, it was <laughs> really awful. But it does 70 miles an hour on the motorway. It's fit for purpose. However, the problem is with the cheapest computer money can buy, 
is that it literally isn't fit for purpose because yeah. it cannot run windows to any kind of to any kind of pleasurable yeah. experience i'm not talking about a good user experience but an acceptable a user tolerable experience, one. a tolerable user yeah. experience and again like user experience is a term that i've been using a lot this month i've discovered that term and i like it because oh, no. well that's the thing it's just again it's just um oh you're becoming one of them well it describes things really well it's like with that xp build we did you know it was a case of not having a cpi doesn't stop us from using it it just yes. diminishes the user experience using xp diminishes <laughs> yeah. the user experience it does it does um having an e1 is a diminishing user experience yes yeah. you know? or no sorry it's a diminished user experience but yeah, yes i don't know uh 6000 but a rebadged 2000 tata what the hell is a tata is that like a, is... it's an indian car brand i was about to say is that an indian car brand yes they are oh, yeah. they, they are the brand that owns rover i was about to like say rover is owned by an indian that, brand that, aren't they yeah as far as i'm aware also yeah. the brand that owns land rover really i think because i thought land rover were owned by ford or someone like that i don't recall yeah or used to or something i can't yeah. remember there was something very i this is this is very much going from oh yes i remember watching top gear one one time on youtube when it was at seven pixels yes <laughs> but yes and, and jaguar that was it yeah oh yeah i thought that was ford oh well yeah, yeah. see there we go okay i wasn't completely off my rocker yeah I'm pleased. Enough. Thank yeah. you. Oh well. But yes, it's it's amazing. Um, when you look at car brands, if you went how many actual parent companies there are, there's like four. Yeah. Kind of thing, and it's just like, oh, okay. The illusion of choice. Like, I, I'm I'm not one of these. Oh no, let's not go down that path. Yeah, no, let's not. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so anyway, motherboards. <laughs> yeah, well, we are just about to roll over to the one hour marker. That's the Windows 11 talk. Anything else you want to talk about with Windows 11 or are we done? I've said my bit. I want to I talk think, about TPM and I the fact that I don't think we're going to need it. I want to do a super quick wrap up that says I'm waiting until there's an actual RTM ISO and then I'll start judging it. Yes. Because before yeah. that point, everything is subject to change. Yes. And e even though Microsoft announced Windows 11, the only hands-on stuff that anyone has had, anything you've seen of Windows 11 running yeah. on any YouTuber or anything like that is all going to be that leaked copy. And because when Microsoft released, when, when we saw the picture of the new settings screen from Microsoft, that, I believe, is not in the leaked version. As far as I'm aware, um, no. Yeah. Someone else said that as well in the Discord, I think. Yeah, which confirms my theory that the leaked version is definitely early yeah. and in all probability... I'm looking at the wrong camera again. In it, That means the leaked version is early and almost certainly not representative of what we'll actually get. Yeah, um, so, absolutely. as I say, for all the people that are rushing out saying, oh, I'm going to download Windows 11 on my thing, it's just like, remember, that leaked version, almost certainly night and day different to what you'll yeah. actually get. And also, that leaked version will be a developer preview, for want of a better description. Yeah. So, most of the installer mm. won't have its checks built in, won't yeah. have the thing saying, just does it have a TPM? You... Yeah. Does it have 4 gigs of RAM? Does it have a processor? Yeah, so everyone who's running around going, oh, well, I've already run Windows 11, so my one's good enough. No, you're running the leak. Which doesn't have half of the stuff in it. And I'm not saying it's going to get locked down and yeah. so on, but it it's might. a case that it might. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the Insider build is coming in a couple of days. So we'll wait and see, and I will update one of my machines to that, and I'll have a look and I'll go, yay, it's yeah. a nothing burger because it's Windows 10. Yeah, basically, it's, it's going to be Windows still, 10 with, still, a, with a with a with a skin on it, isn't it? Kind of. It's basically yeah. the same kernel. It's basically the same driver stack, so yeah. nothing is going to be much different. Although apparently, it does have some performance improvements in the scheduler for non uh, non homogeneous designs. Fair enough. So yes. Yeah, I might install it on something. I I need to get. I need something in here that's on Insider Rings because I don't have anything on Insider Rings. So when you know, you like, do it on your laptop. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess I could. Cause my well, that that's the thing is, uh, the problem is I look around. I'm like, what have I got in here that's not mission critical? 
Um, and I'm just like, well, the laptop isn't mission critical, and technically the Lianli isn't either. The Lianli isn't mission critical, so that could be on inside a ring. But then on the other hand, yeah, I don't know. Um, I could put it on the Corsair, because that's not mission critical. Um, that would be a good place for it to be, I feel like. Yeah, also especially because that is at, that's on the shop floor. So if someone comes in and they say, oh, I've heard there's a new thing of Windows, I'd be like, yeah, I've got the Insider build over here if you want to have a look at it. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. actually, I'm go I'll put it on the 220. Yeah. Um, because um, yeah, that's a that's a computer that is suited for it. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I was going to say the, the only thing to be aware of is you will need to be signed in with a Microsoft account. That's fine. Yeah. But yeah. other than that, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I need to. Um, I think yeah, Adam and IT does have a Microsoft account. Of course it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sign it in on that. But yes, again, friendly reminder to people: don't run insider builds on your main rig. Um, I, it sounds it's obvious, but trust, like I, I it, on a not on a regular basis yeah. but several times i've had friends or uh, or randoms message me on discord going ah my computer's mucking up and it's got it's got a weird windows 10 bug because they're on inside on they're on dev builds and insider rings yeah and i'm just like right you're on an insider ring it's an unstable build you're really? running a developer preview yeah. are you running a developer preview? yeah and they're just like oh i just wanted the new version and it's just like don't run developer stuff on production you idiot. Certainly, certainly if you're not in the category of people who's just like, I oh, know, I guess yeah. I'll reinstall Windows 10. Yeah. Tada, I'm redone in 15 minutes. Because that's the... If you're not in that category of people, yeah. don't run it on something live. Because preview builds and developer builds, they do have bugs in them. They will do weird things. I remember yeah. when Windows 10 was in public beta, every, every preview build of Windows 10 had a quirk in it. Oh, yeah. Not all of them were breaking. Some of them were, were deal-breaking. I've got uh, I've got a video on my private YouTube uh, uh, somewhere of one of the early Windows 10 previews where just it, it had an Explorer crash. So just Explorer would just crash and reload every couple of minutes. Oh, and yeah. It just, yeah, just you'd be using it and it would just go flash. And you'd be like, oh, you know, it, it wasn't break. It was just enough that you thought it was OK. And then it wasn't. It was. Yeah, well. I had that. I had that on one of my computers a couple of months ago, but. Explorer has got to the point of recovery where it would crash and reopen everything and you couldn't tell. Yeah. The only way you could tell was by watching it go. Yeah. And I was just like, that's impressive level of recovery. Hmm. That's that auto recovery kind of thing. Is yeah. Very impressive. Yeah. Also, um, uh, Noel, uh, you can bypass Microsoft account bobbins on Windows 11 too. Probably. Yeah. I've, I've no I doubt. Don't see, I don't yeah. see why not. However, one of the things as well is that um, for when when you're looking at preview stuff, and certainly from my perspective, I want to look at Windows. Excuse me. I want to look at Windows 11 from the perspective of what Microsoft want it to be. Yeah. So, like Microsoft, it in their vision, the that what the the experience they want you to have is to be signed in with a Microsoft account, so everything works synchronously. Yeah. So therefore, I want to be doing that. Now, I'm not going to do that everywhere because there are some places where I can make a judgment call and be like, I know what that experience is and that's not something that this system needs. Yeah. However, there are other, like, but if I'm looking at a preview of something, you know, I want to see what they're planning. I want to see what their vision is. Yeah. So, as I say, although you can buy, I'm, I've no doubt you can bypass my, the Microsoft yeah. account, but, like, I don't want to be messing around with it. I want to see what Microsoft's vision of it looks like. Exactly. Because it's also another case of it clues you in to things in directions they're yeah. considering going. It's also more accurate to what the end customers are going to be seeing as well. Because you might yeah, say, certainly all, a lot of oh, I bypassed all of the Microsoft account on my system. Yeah, but your customers didn't. So yeah. this is what your customers are seeing. And if your customers are seeing something different to you, you fall out of touch. So you've got to be a little bit careful yeah. with this sort of it's thing. It's also a case of, to a degree, why I think I don't think either of us run remotely close to customised Windows installs. Yeah, I customise as little as I can. I customise the wallpaper. Yeah. And make sure the screen resolution is the correct screen resolution yeah. and refresh rate. And I'm done. It's the same it's the same reason why I'm why I why I don't like debloating and stuff like that. Because it's yeah. a case of I've no doubt that there are some benefits to debloating, but yeah. all of that is taking further away from the mainstream experience of Windows, which is what... Now, 
if you're not in the repair space, like if you're just a home, if you're just a gamer at home running on their own system and you don't care what other people are running, then obviously you can do whatever you want and it doesn't matter. Mm. But for me, I want to be running something that's very uh, on my on my daily drivers. I want my my daily experience of Windows to be very uh, reasonably close to what everyone else in the world is doing. Yeah. So then when someone says, "Oh, I've got this problem," I can be like, "Oh, yes, I know all about that." Whereas for, if someone, you know, whereas if someone else says, "I've got a problem with my X," and you're going, "Well, I'm running Linux, so I don't know." Yeah. It's very unhelpful mm. yeah. when Microsoft is ninety percent of market share. Yes, something so, like that. Again, so I'm it, not. It's I'm not unhelpful. saying. Yeah, so I'm not saying that you can't do this. You shouldn't do that, or it's bad. Yeah, it's just not practical for anyone who is working in the support business. If yeah. you see what I mean. Yeah. Well, it's also kind of a case to a degree. It's kind of being aware of the aware of people doing those things. Mm. Just. Yeah, so you're aware of people doing those things. So if something looks very squicky, you can kind of go, oh, I wonder if someone's done this, and know yeah. what the undo button is for that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. Part of it is also laziness. I need to I need to look into debloating at some point, but also just my experience of debloating is when, like, someone just mentioned it, that I have one recently. Yeah, I had a customer recently uh, where the some uh, the customer is a kid... With a very expensive computer, and he'd seen some video about debloating Windows. So he downloaded the debloating a debloating tool and said, "Do all the debloat," and stripped about half the Windows system files out and completely butchered the install of Windows. Yeah, and obviously, and because I've got no idea what he's done, because he's got no idea what he's done, mm. time to reinstall Windows. Yeah, and so that. Th that, that's the thing is people often wonder why I'm so against debloating because that's my experience of it yeah, when absolutely. customers come in with half their system 32 folder missing. Yeah, you or know. just like 90% of the Microsoft services being inexplicably half deleted. Yeah, and that's the thing. Just a lot of the time it's not even disabled. It's actually gone because a lot of people, it's not good enough for Cortana to be disabled. They're like, no, I want to delete it. And it's just yeah. like... If it's not running, it's not using system resources. So who cares? And they're like, no, I want it gone. Yeah. And it's just like, fine. And so you get people in and now their Explorer doesn't work because Cortana has been deleted and Cortana is knitted into Explorer, yeah. which is why Cortana still isn't dead because one does not simply delete Cortana. You mm -hmm. can't delete Cortana. Yeah. You can only butcher it to the point where it doesn't function. Yeah. You know, but mm, I'm, I'm ranting. I'm ranting. Indeed. Anyway. Am I contemplating the place of the CMOS battery? Or, this is a normal place to put a CMOS battery on a motherboard. But yes. Attached. Anyway. <laughs> yes, attached. A normal, a normal place for it to be is attached in some fashion. Yeah, well, unlike this laptop over here, like, this is a complete tangent. Oh, no. This is a laptop that I'm working on. Video out probably, video out probably next week. Oh, no, I need to take the covers off it. Um, but this is one of those ones where you see a design choice in the laptop and you're like, why did you do that? For what purpose did this th was this done? You know. So hold on a sec. While I quickly take this cover off, is it going to come off easily? Come on. There we go. Uh, right. Get a load of this. Ah, uh, bench cam. Go. Ah. Uh, look at this. U USB USB board. U it's got the, U the it's got the USB on it. This is the USB I/O board on the side. There's a space and the pads to put the CMOS battery, but it's there on a little fly lead. Why? What purpose? Did, why? Did it allow them to make the case two millimetres thinner? I don't think so, because when I was looking online, because I need to replace this board, I found another one that does actually have the battery holder there. Is that the same model? No. I'll admit that it's not the same model, so maybe it was a height issue. But, like, I don't know. Oh, I, if, I think you if, might be right. Actually. If your laptop is too thin to have a yeah watch battery in it, possibly your <laughs> laptop needs to be thicker. Yeah, I don't know. It's just wow. I, I have a suspicion you're probably right. It was a height constraint, and the model that where the battery is actually mounted there, uh, that's probably a slightly higher end module model that is probably a couple of mil thicker anyway, so, and probably yeah. has a cooling fan that's actually big enough. Yes, unlike 
yeah, unlike this, unlike that cooling system. But I don't know. That's just a random thing that made me go. Just I saw it. I was just like, but why though? You know. So yeah. I always think the M2 connector is the wrong way round when just looking at it without something in there. It always kind of looks like it's the wrong way round, and stuff should plug into it like that, oh, not right, like yeah. that. This is yeah. Oh yeah, no, that is correct. Never hmm. mind. Right. Okay. Right. I think we're done with uh, the Windows stuff. Ugh. Right. We've done all of those things. Um. All right. So, uh, what brand? It's a Dell. It's a Dell Inspiron five thousand series. So yes. Uh, does that happen in computers? Uh, in my industry, mechanics give feedback to engineers to help improve design. Oof. It probably happens at high level repair stuff like authorized repair centers and stuff like that um it wouldn't happen to it um because i might be giving I them mean, way based too much of what we've seen from authorized repair centers they'll go oh this is liquid damage let's replace literally every component in the computer to yeah. that it has been repaired but no no you've just replaced the machine yeah that is not a repair yeah i think you might be right so I want to believe, but no. <laughs> so yes. Oh well. Wasn't that X Files? No. Yes. X Files. I want to believe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, is it time for your keyboard? Oh wait, no, that's Doctor Who. Never mind. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. I mean, it certainly can be. It can be. If if you if you would like to. Let's look time. at your keyboard. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'll, I'll go and get you. I nearly bit my tongue then. It's oh. there. It's there. It's there. It's, it's right it, there. It's there. It's right there. It's, it's right within there. arm's reach. It's within arm's reach. Um. Right. This was something we didn't get around to last week, so we're going to do this now, and we're gonna we're gonna natter. Um. Yeah. Uh, if you thought we were going to talk about USB Type C, then I misled you. What we actually mean is we're going to try and retrofit USB Type C to a thing. Um. So. Uh. I'm gonna. Just camera setup. We go to that, and then we go. Where's the capture? Live gaming mini. Bam. Hi. Do we want to be down there? That'll do. <clears throat> we live down here now. Uh, so, uh, I'm gonna adjust this. Whoop. Yeah, let's do that. Eh. This is Caradog's code keyboard, uh, and uh, we mentioned this last week, but it has a USB micro port on it. And uh, we thought we'd try and see what's involved in uh, a possible video coming up. Is we wanted to see if we could fit Type C to this, um, not because it makes the keyboard go faster or anything, but just for ease of connectivity. Because Caradog is, you're almost a hundred percent Type C now, aren't you? Yeah, either either Type C or full size USB A. Yeah, um, and you're trying to rid yourself of USB Micro. Basically. So, um, yeah, we want to see if we can retrofit Type-C to this keyboard. So what we thought we'd do is we'd just open this up and have a look-see. Um, and uh, uh, once we've once we've had a look-see, we know what what we might need to order in order to convert this thing. So, uh, so yeah, we're going to open this up and see what's inside. I started looking during the week at custom keyboard kits and stuff. Hmm. And very quickly went, no, I'm fine, thanks. Just because the documentation around them is completely lacking. Yeah. The list of whether stuff is compatible is completely lacking. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like the fact that I'm supposedly buying 100, 150 pound parts mm. where even the manufacturer won't tell me whether it's compatible with anything at all. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay. Yeah. What? It's a bit... Yeah, the custom keyboard scene kind of really is a matter of, like, it's a bit, um, what's the word for it? It's a bit of a closed community kind of thing. When you're in the community, everyone knows what's going on. But if you're just like, oh, that looks cool. How do I, you know, how, how do I get in on that? And they're just like, well, you, you, you just, you buy the parts and you assemble it. And it's just like, yeah, but what works with what? You know, and yeah, you kind of have to sit and read through a lot of parts yeah. of this kind of thing. It's and not like, I'm it's not not like building a PC. Anything, but yeah. It's not like building an actual PC where there are actual standards and specifications and mm. stuff. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, DNA electronics can't stand them horizontal return keys. 
I agree. Um... ISO for life. But the problem is, if you run ISO layout, it's really hard to get keycaps. Also, it's a case of this is an ANSI keyboard, so it's going yeah. to have ANSI keycaps. <laughs> yeah, uh, I entirely agree. I, do, I don't like the uh, the, an, the the ANSI AI a, a, ANSI. Yeah, ANSI. That's what you said, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like the a, ANSI layout either with the the horizontal thing. But um, the main thing that bothers me is um, the it's how how do you do a pound sterling symbol? Oh, one three seven. Yeah. See, the problem is I like to run tenless keyboards and you can't do alt codes on the top row. No. So this is why I don't like this. This is why I don't like American keyboards. And this is why if I get one of my uh, American keyboards. This was the principal reason why I stopped using this keyboard at home, because this is also an American layout or ANSI layout keyboard. And because it doesn't have a pound, a pound sterling symbol on it, which of course is the Queen's currency. Thank you very much. Uh, I can't. I can't do that, and I can't do alt codes because I don't have a numpad. So you literally like it's just re and so you're like, okay, we'll set it to UK layout then. All right. So you set it to UK layout and you get your pound sterling, but now your backslashes don't work because the backslash is in a different location. So yeah, whatever. You say you can map it. Uh, how how do you map it? What software do you use for that? Because that is of interest to me. Yeah, what software do you use to remap a keyboard? Do you do any remapping? No, although... You just, just memorise alt codes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, although if I was going to do that, I'd just reprogram it in the actual microprocessor, in the actual controller for the That's keyboard. That's pretty cool. Can you is that can you do that on lots of keyboards or is that a trick of this of this? You can do keyboards? that on a reasonable number of mm. non-mainstream mechanical keyboards, as yeah. far as I'm aware. But also, I think you can set it per yeah. Windows install. Uh, see, MS keyboard layout and and the, and stuff like that, they make a new layout file, and you have a new layout file that you have to specifically use, and it's annoying because I think I've done that before, and I, and it kind of works, but it's also really annoying. So yeah. the hmm. other thing you have got on this one is the dip switches. Yeah, that's super cool. That the, the dip switches that um Where are we going? Do you want to figure this out? There yeah. you go. Yeah, that, that change that changes your physical layout, doesn't it? Yes, uh because it's got QWERTY, Colmac, and Dvorak built into the keyboard. Yeah. Plus also it's got a remap of the um caps lock key. Cool. To what? I can't remember. I can't remember what mm. it is, but I don't use it. Yeah. Um, Imagine using Dvorak or Colmax. Um, oh, I think it's a uh, caps lock disable. There's a All option right. to just disable the caps lock key. Hmm. Fair enough. Right. Let's start opening this up while we talk. Is this the version two? Yeah, this is the two B. The two B. Uh, yeah. The version three comes with Type C, um, and is that a screw? Uh, and also comes with a more programmable controller. Just yeah. You can just control it there and then. Or program it. Basically there and then. In controller yeah. programming is very cool. I, I approve of that because obviously that way when you remap your keys to how you want them to be, that's saved within the keyboard, mm -hmm. not in software. And yeah. that I very much approve of. I like that a lot. Um, eh. So let's start opening this thing up and we're going to see what it's going to take to change out that USB port. This might be a big old nothing burger. We might actually go in there and go, oh, wow, that's not happening. And decide that it's easier just to, well, I don't know, actually. Either way, we'll have a look. To just not care. <laughs> yes. Or we might, I might have a look at that and be like, you, I can't be asked with this, Caradog. You you can have a go if you want, but I'm taking, I might take one look at it and go like, nope, I'm out. Yeah. All right, I've got to find the uh, hacking screws first. Anyone under there? Uh, come on. Are you a screw? Is there uh, a screw here? Man, this thing's not going without a fight. Am I going to need to put some heat on that? Quality mm. rubber. It is. It's very good quality rubber foot. There is no screw there. No, as far as I'm aware. Anything under there? Oh, there's ones under here. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, it's just the line across there. Let's see if we can... There we go. There's one. It's also delightfully creaky as a keyboard. It is a very creaky keyboard, yeah. It's um, yeah, and also this thing's got a, it's got the the most flex ever 
which I can't show on camera, so I won't. But it, it, it flexes like a gymnast, this keyboard. But then the actual deck doesn't kind of thing. Yeah. And it's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's a weird animal, this. Uh, and there. But yes, I basically bought it just for the clear switches. Oh, yeah, because this thing's got uh, Cherry MX Clear in. Yeah. And when you first were talking about Cherry MX Clear, I was like, oh, you're one of those where it just you can't just use browns like a normal person. You've got to have specific switches. You've got to. Well... However, I have to admit, the clears in these, which are very heavy switches, they require more force to press down, do actually feel really good. I, I would actually like, like, it. Do, do, you have two of these, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Do you fancy loaning me one at some point for like a week? Maybe. Because I would like to borrow one from you and try it for like a week at home as a daily, just to just to see if the novelty wears off or not. Yes. <clears throat> this is not coming open. Oh, I'm onto something there. <laughs> I'm hearing a creak. No. Nope. This, luckily, is just the home one, not the work one. Let me in! Bloody hell. I'm going to look for more... Uh, oh, do you reckon there's a screw under that label? I have no idea. Yeah. I think there is. I'm going to I'm gonna go for it. Ooh. Oh, no, I don't think it is. I'm not I'm not finding I'm not finding a divot for the screwdriver. Nope. It's just a weirdly poorly fitting. I think it's just a molding yeah. mark under there. I think it's just the molding mark. Uh man, this this thing is the the force is strong with this one. I might have to take off some more feet and look for more screws. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not getting a word in edgeways here, literally. I would imagine that there are two here. Yeah, I'm gonna check under these feet. Eh. Hello. Nothing. All right, man. Do you know that? Bonjour. <laughs> Get the Dremel out. <laughs> I don't think that is an option that Caradog would appreciate. No. Uh, still nothing. Nope. They did not hide any screws. I mean, that's a good thing, because I would be very... Like, there, there's no need to hide screws under this thing. No. It's it is not a pretty keyboard. Yeah. Why don't you use plastic opener? The metal one will leave marks. Everyone says that a plastic opener is gonna snap off on this. And I'll tell you what, I'll prove it, because everyone tells me to use plastic openers. And I'm just like, I don't know what plastic openers you've got, but every plastic opener I've used has snapped. I'm gonna find one because I've got a box of them somewhere. And I'm gonna try and open it with plastic openers. Ah, uh, got it. Oh, have you got it open? Yeah. Ah, uh, alright. <laughs> it was it was a very recessed clip. And I can't find my product spot. Let's just stand up. Standing up is much easier. Instead of this silly little stool. Oh! I have got Judy. a I've got a box of plastic. Uh, prying tools somewhere, and I can't find any of them now. But yeah, plastic tools, you, you dig it in and it just snaps off. But yeah, and people say sort of, oh, metal tools leave marks. Then be more careful. Also, like, I'm not I... particularly concerned <clears throat> I dropped it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I get loads of comments on my videos saying sort of, oh, you should use plastic tools. I'm just like, they're slow and they break. Use metal tools and get good. You know, that's literally my opinion of that. Stay. Metal tools are faster, and if you're leaving marks, you're being too vicious with them. I mean, I'll probably leave marks all over this. I mean, yeah, if you go in deep and you go, oh, get open, then yeah, it's going to leave marks. But yeah, I don't leave marks on stuff. I'm not sure if you're snapping. Oh, no, you're not snapping clips. They're just really vicious clips. There we go. Either way, yeah. I was obviously being a little bit too passive because it wasn't my keyboard. But yes. I love the fact that I blew this one out with an airline, specifically because it was coming on camera. Yeah. And still got all of 
that. Yeah, like... man. The the only way to properly clean a um um ooh, who's come off there? We have lost. No, we did take that screw out. Yeah. But... Yeah, I was gonna say we did snap a post, but the screw was out. I wonder what was holding that up. Or actually, I wonder if that was already snapped from the from the drop, because you say it was you dropped it at one point. Because we definitely that screw was removed. That was the corner I dropped. Yeah, so that was just a snap screw post. Yeah, because yeah. that was the corner I dropped. Yeah, I'm surprised that didn't spin when I tried to remove the screw. Probably because probably, you've still got. Yeah, it was much held in left. with interference. Yeah. So yeah. But yes. Anyway. Uh, right, okay, so all the action is going to be going on on the back. So does that come off now? Uh, we've got our set. The USB is on a separate board here. I can see it coming off. Can we do that? Oh, yeah. Oh, you've got loads of length anywhere. Yeah. On the table. Okay, let's get that guy out. That's a big connector for what it does. There we go. Yeah. Whoop. Okay. Oh, that's delightfully modular. This is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. Unfortunately, it's heat. Oh no, it's not heat staked in. That is, is that is small Phillips. Good lord! Are you looking at all of the stuff that's still? No, in no, there? no. I'm looking okay. at the fact that there is this metal plate mm. that is actually quite thick. Oh wow! Yeah, that that explains the weight of this thing. Um, and so this bit actually bends that much. Yeah. <laughs> However, this bends that much. <laughs> it's like ah oh, yes, that would be where that flex is. The other thing I want to do is test whether this LED works. Oh, yes, I I remember that. Yeah, we'll have a look at that in a sec, because we should just be able to stick the multimeter on that in diode mode. Yeah. I'm just checking to see if there's any damage or anything around it. I'm going to take off that sellotape. It's fine. I'm going to attack this with um, a toothbrush. I was going to say, you can actually detail this while we've got it apart. Because look at that. Yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, I think that's flux. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's flux. I don't think that... Like, you haven't spilled anything on this, have you? That looks like just no. manufacturing. Yeah. yeah, that's just manufacturing. Yes. I'm going to use yeah. my nice, clean new ones. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Caradog very passive-aggressively showed up today with a lot of nice new toothbrushes and cleaning cloths. I was like, what are you implying about my toothbrushes and cleaning cloths? Yes, I, I turned up with tools that may be limited in this place how very dare i do have new toothbrushes do you yeah you just choose to use the grotty splayed ones maybe also these are for glasses not for like computer cleaning noted as in spectacles yes <laughs> this 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 entire thing is a spectacle <laughs> something like that right let's take a look at this board while uh um, Caradog does stuff. Um, where's my focus? Right, let's go into there, and I need to take one of my, I need to take one of my full screens off of full screen. Yeah, I need um, what I'll do. Oh, so I need to rearrange my windows so I can see better. Oh, okay. I guess we're going this way. Right, preview, pre scale to canvas. There we go. Right. There's the USB board. So the bad news is there's actually a fair bit going on on this board. But the good news is... Um, see, basically what we want to do is we want to replace this with a Type-C connector. So we need to figure out what this is all doing. I mean, we've got some capacitors there. That's no big deal. Um, However, we've also got a couple of resistors, um, and those are probably inductors on the data lines. And we need to figure out what those are doing if we're going to adapt that to type C. Um, so the question is, are we going to try and replace this entire board, or are we going to try and solder a type C connector onto this board? I see, that's all I was planning on doing was taking that one off, sticking a Type-C on top. Yeah. And then going, ta-da! Not quite that easy, because the Type-C connector is, uh, like, I mean, the Type-C connector has got, what, 18 pins? 
I think, because it's 9 the times, the USB nine three times 2, one does. It? Yeah, but you've yeah. also got USB 2 Type-C ones, which should be the same pinout. I suppose, yeah. Uh, what? Do you reckon they'll be pin compatible? I don't know, are they? Let's find out. Well, I, ima I am purely imagining they would be, because I can't see why you'd change the pinout for USB 2. Whoops, there were screws in that. Hang on a sec, I'm losing screws. There we go, there's the three screws. Where did they come from? Uh, they oh, were holding this board that. in. Yeah. Okay, I thought they were screws I just lost no. from other computers. <laughs> no. Alright, I'm going to put those over there. Um, brushy, 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 brushy. Brushy, brushy. Uh, oh, I've just noticed that the silk screen is labelled. Go back to there a sec. Uh, oh, not a sec. Bench cam. Uh, focus. Uh, bam. One, two, three, four. Um, the silk screen is that? Yeah, oh yeah. So like page down, delete, plus, minus, zero. Yeah, that, BN, etc. That's quite neat if you're actually desoldering switches and putting them in because if you are changing the physical layout of the keyboard, so you're going to like, for example, if you wanted to convert this to an ISO layout, um, which would require you like, that's where the ISO backslash key should be, but it's missing because um. Uh, oh. So you you could you could desolder some of these switches and put in the ISO layout switches and convert the entire keyboard to ISO layout. We should absolutely do that. Do one you, of them. I mean, yeah. I mean, we could we can do if you want. That would be very easy to do. Absolutely, do that with one of them. I'll have to get a new one. Yeah. I mean, this is why I this is why I want to look into um. That post snapped as well. No, that one's intact. Um, this is why I want to do a custom keyboard because a custom keyboard you're supposed to buy it and um, uh, and solder in all your switches. But um, that's the thing. Custom keyboards are just so expensive because all the parts are made in small runs. They're incredibly expensive oh. for what they are. I really want to do a cut some custom keyboard stuff, but it's just it's a lot of money, man. They're you, like you need to budget two to two or three hundred pounds. For a custom keyboard yeah. and that probably won't even have rgb backlighting on it it will be Good. solid color <laughs> you say that like it's a problem i want rgb though so it can be any color i want although that much being said i always set my keyboard to white anyway so yeah are we using glass cleaner on the board yes just oh, using glass cleaner yeah so yeah because uh bushy, bushy, bushy. glass cleaner is all you need um, glass cleaner is a little bit more effective than alcohol, but it's also non-conductive and it evaporates without a residue. So, uh, why don't we use a USB Type-C to micro USB adapter? Um, we could hot glue it to the back of the keyboard. <sighs> because that doesn't involve taking a keyboard apart and soldering. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> you're right, but also we're doing this not because that's a sensible thing to do, but we're doing this because we can. That's the idea. Also it, because I want the actual physical connector physically on the keyboard to not be micro B. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a case of it's it's not because this is something that needs to be done. It's more of, it's not a case of who will let us, but who will stop us. So do I game in the dark or with the light on? I always have a desk light on. That, that's the funny thing. I don't need a backlight on my keyboard, but they're so pretty, you know, that's that's the problem. I, I don't need a backlight, but they're so pretty. So it's it's tough, man. Right, I'm going to I'm going to hit up uh, eBay and I'm gonna have a look around to see what our options are. So I'm gonna change my heckin' screen layout again. Uh, all right, let's put that there and let's move OBS over to there. And let's go eBay. That's Caradog with the air compressor out the back. Uh, so desktop. And let's make me smaller because I'm obnoxiously large. Uh, I live up here now. Right, so USB type C connector. So like, firstly, I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm looking for. I'm just trying to I'm trying to figure this out as we go basically. I'm just trying to figure it out. So how what's a type C connector look like? What can we find? 
These are all adapters. I want actual raw connect. So this is one option. This is something that is what I ha originally had in mind here. Let's zoom in a bit. Yeah, basically. This is what I was envisioning for this. So look at this. This is a type C connector on a breakout board. Um, so this is one option here. So we would, we would hot glue that into the back of the case and then just stick the USB two lines on there. But the difficulty is, is that the one that we've got, if I switch back to the bench, oh, so let me focus the bench cam again. But the problem is the one we've got, so look, we've got our, our USB two lines coming in, but we've also got this extra stuff. We've got extra action going on here. We've got some extra inductors and some extra uh, resistors across some of the lines. And I don't know what those are doing. So, uh, yeah, people are saying AliExpress, DigiKey Manager and stuff like that. I'm not worried about the price right now. I just want to see what exists, basically. So, yeah, crunchy audio suddenly. Yeah, the crunchy audio is because there's a... Uh, because Caradog is toothbrushing and there's a, um, uh, a compressor running in the background. So, yeah, that will disappear, don't worry. So, yeah, that's the thing. It's more of a case of what is this stuff doing? Let's go for the super close-up just so I can see it without the camera moving all over the place. Let's go oh. <laughs> Let's smash it in the face. Uh, right, let me move this back over to where I can see it. Uh, actually, I'll leave that there. Uh, where's my preview? Where's my full screen preview? Uh, win uh, window preview. Uh, put that up there. <laughs> there we go. Right. So let's see. So here's the thing. We've got a USB 2 line, so we can put those onto one of those USB Type-C breakouts. But what is this stuff all doing? Those are going to be inductors. So that's just filters to stop things getting zapped when you hot plug it. I think. Yeah. What have we got here? Because we've got extra lines. We've got two going up the middle there. Oh, that's... Yeah, okay. Those are the data lines. And that... See, what's that guy doing? Is that ground? I don't know. Because we've got five volts coming in at the top here. Those two thin ones are going to be the data lines. So what's that? Might need to start buzzing this out. Uh, let's see. I think that one just vanishes. I don't think that is a one. Yeah. I think it's just a spacer. Yeah, you might be right. It might be. It might be going to ground. Um, and they've just put ground on both sides of the data lines. Um, yeah. For, uh, so that that would yeah, make I sense. Yeah, I think it's just ground between the data lines. Yep. So we can yeah. we can easily figure this out by buzzing it out. So I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to start buzzing it out. So let's go over to ground, and let's see. So ground, beep, beep, and yeah, it's ground. So yeah. that is also ground then. So. Though that's our D plus, that's our D minus, that's ground, that's ground, that's our five volts. Fine. Okay. So these capacitors are all between five volt and ground. Um, they're probably not needed. I doubt very much that those are needed. Um, there's something. There's other stuff there as well between five volt and ground. Um, and again, another inductor there. That goes under L202 to ground. Yeah. So is L202 going to ground? Are you... That's not ground. That goes somewhere else. That's, I think that's yeah, that's data. that's five volts. No, that's five volts, that one. Oh, yeah. Um and that's going under here. There's yeah. So that's five volts, and then there's a via going from here to here, probably on the other side of the board. Eh. Uh, oh, I stand corrected. It's literally just ground on the other side. Mm. There's some there's some way there. In fact, the trace probably goes under C203. Oh, it does. I can see it, I think. Bloody hell. Hang on a sec. I need to get closer to that. There's a... This is a this... So shockingly complicated layout, given all of the space yeah. they had to the left. Yeah. 
Hang on, sorry, the, the bench cam is a, a long is, is a, a long extension, which means it doesn't like going this low. So I'm having trouble getting in super close here. Something, something I need a microscope. I'm aware. It's way over engineered. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Mr. Guru. I'm looking at this going, do they really need this? I'm pretty certain they don't need most of this stuff. So now it's a question of how much, like, is any of this actually needed? Because I don't think it is. There we go, right. Uh, no. if you, yeah, that's fine. Let go of it. And then I bring that one down. We've just got to move a bit closer. There we go. There we go. Now we can see what's going on. All right. So, yeah, so we've got to jump under L202 there. That's ground going under there. So then the five volts, that guy goes up there under C203 up to there, I think. So, yeah, these capacitors, bet money those aren't needed. L202, that's just an inductor. That's probably not needed. No idea what this guy is doing. What's TP? Oh, v oh hang on. TP. Toilet paper. Oh, TP, that's test point because there's a test point there. So what's VAR? Yeah, what is VAR? What is that doing? Variable... No idea. Anyone know what VAR 201 is? What the hell is that guy? Varista, yeah. What's the Varista doing then? I'm just going to remove my focus. Yeah, why is that there? Do you reckon that is an overcurrent thing? Um, it's overcurrent protection? I mean, there are a lot of LEDs that do go quite bright. Yeah. So maybe. OC protection. Yeah, heat sensitive yeah. fuse. Yeah, yeah. Overcurrent protection. Because obviously there are 101 yeah. white LEDs. Yeah. So, I mean, we might be able to solder that onto the uh, type C board easily enough. Because all that has to do is go between 5 volt and ground. Or we could just say, who cares? If it blows up, it blows up. I'd rather not it I'd rather it didn't blow up a USB port. That's true, it might take out a USB well the USB port will have its own protection anyway. So yeah. Um current sensing. Oh, I wouldn't have thought so. They're not gonna current sense that. Or if they do, they'll do that within the keyboard. So these guys again, those are just gonna be filters. So those um and we've also got more varistas on Oh yeah, VAR 203, VAR 202, more varistas between the data lines and ground as well. So, and those are resistors, are you sure? R202, L and R201. What's that talking about? Those have got to be, those have got to be um, uh, filter inductors, right? Why not keep the board and solder the connector in place of the micro USB socket? Because the type C connector has got 18 pins on it. That's why I'm trying to avoid that. And if we don't solder those 18 pins properly, it won't be reversible and things like that, which kind of defies the point. Could be zero ohms. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll um I think they're inductors. I think they're filter inductors. Uh I'll do a quick resistance check on them. Although, if they're inductors, they'll come up at zero ohms, won't they? I'm going to pull out for a moment while I do some checks on that. Bam, bam. Yeah, they're zero ohm. So they're, they're almost certainly inductors, I think. Check ohms. Yeah, they're coming up at like half an ohm. Um, they're coming up at half an ohm which to me suggests that they are inductors. So they're just filtering, is what I think. So I don't think any of this stuff is actually necessary for the keyboard to function. And I reckon we could just drop in. So again, let me just switch back to uh, a, a suitable connector. So um, let's minimize this a sec so we get that and go back to desktop capture. I reckon we could swap out this entire board for one of these and then we just solder our USB, our, the board wires onto there and that's it, done. That's what I think. PCV says R, it should, it, so it should be correct. Yeah. I mean, in that case, there's zero ohm resistors. So yeah, maybe there's zero, yeah, maybe there's zero ohm resistors which are functioning as poor man's fuses. 
Type-C on PC board only has six pads to connect. Yeah, you've got to join it all up at some point, though. Otherwise, it won't be reversible and stuff like that. Yeah. I reckon we could drop all of that. Yeah. Oh, Vladimir says it's probably a reusable layout for many things. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah. Yeah, because if you look at, obviously, the silk screening on the back, mm. it doesn't specifically mention WAST or code. Yeah. So it could just be a purchased in component. Yeah, just a unit. So this, yeah, so the suggestion is, is that this is just a... Uh, a universal commodity. Hang on a minute, where's my mouse pointer? Ugh, bench cam. There we go. So that just says micro USB kind of thing. Like this could just be a commodity USB input keyboard. Uh, sorry, this could be a commodity USB input board for things. And it's, n you know, so yeah. Try searching for an OC protected USB Type C port. Yeah, is the is that is that a thing that exists, or are we speculating? Let me uh, switch back to eBay. Ooh, desktop. Because like one of these would be wonderfully simple. Let's come out of that. Let's see. Um, type C board. Uh, overcurrent. Oh, here we go. DIY 24 pin 3.1. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, I don't think that's got anything extra on it. What's that? That's different design. That's got stuff on it. What's actually on the action side of that? That's the biggest picture. That's very annoying. I really hate it when you can't see bigger pictures. Open image in new tab? Nope, that's as big as it gets. Uh, that's got a capacitor on it, and it's got the... Res I seem to remember one of these resistors just sets it to host or yeah. device mode. So yeah. that resistor is probably host device selection. I think it's a 57k. Yeah. Uh, that the spudger go? Oh, it's the oh yeah. I was going to say, we've got a capacitor which gives us some capacitor, but yeah, overcurrent protection? No. So, uh, right, what about over... Yeah, let's go back. That's a mail connector, was it? What oh, was yeah. it? Socket. Yeah, Type-C connector. Socket. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. Hmm. That's got a big old breakout board on it. See, one of these... We've got room for one of these big old breakout boards, which might be handy, because we could attach additional things to that. Interesting. See, this gives us access to all the pins, so we can stick on mods to make it do what we want. So if we want to stick in, um, if we want to stick in uh, a couple of those uh, variable resistors, we could use both boards. Yeah, what are you interesting in? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. That socketed, actually socketed it, he did. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have a look at that in a sec. Um, <clears throat> see, we've got we've got space for that. I'm inclined to get something like this um, because oh, but then that's going to be a lot. We we're going to have that's going to require more mod wires to actually hook yeah. up. That might work against us because we'll have to we'll have to wire in all of our mod wires manually. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that is. Hang on a minute. I want to make sure that I'm, that this is. See, that says socket. That doesn't look like a socket. Yeah, that's a socket because it's got the center spade. Are these keyboards a thing? You could design a PCB and sell it as an upgrade. Uh, I wouldn't want. I'm not. I don't know enough. I'm an idiot figuring this out as I go. Um, so I don't know enough to be able to make such an upgrade kit. I mean, as I say, really, you just buy something newer that already has Type-C on it. We're just doing this as a sort yeah. of a... This is an interest thing, really. It's just a case of we're looking at this going, how hard is it to convert mi B micro B stuff to Type-C stuff? That's the question. Because that's the... Pr like, if we buy this and it goes well, we'll make a video about it, you see. And we yeah. can be like, 
here's how you can up here's how you can convert micro b stuff to type c stuff in a reasonably elegant manner the other thing that would be good to do as well is to uh, modify one of the logitech unifying receivers yeah and make a type c one of them yeah that'd be kind of cool i think that'd be real difficult though because i think those have a lot of stuff built inside the type a connector Mm. Um, so I think that would actually be quite difficult to do in any kind of nice way. So yeah, you could make a PCB. Um, yeah, that'd be intro. I kind of want to use commodity parts if I can. I appreciate the offer. I'm pretty sure that you could just use. That's just that. it. I think that's going to be good enough. And then just obviously take the wires off of that. Yeah, I think it's that simple personally. And if we wanted to, huh. we could just we could stick those variable resistors in across. Um, uh, you know, the data lines and ground and voltage and ground and just mod wire those in. DIY Perks, yeah, DIY Perks has done stuff like this before and he yeah. did something very similar to this. Um, and yeah, he was doing that with adapters as well. Mm. I'd like to modify um, a Unify receiver just for obviously oh, for like mobile phones. That's and stuff. interesting. And so obviously, because play... of my screen, because mm. the screen I've got. That's a very interesting premise, yeah. So, I thought, to, just to explain what Caradoc's talking about here, um, let me switch back to the bench. I'll just grab the screen. Ah. Uh, this is a... Oh, let's focus out a bit. Uh, focus. Focus, you fuck. There we go. This is a Logitech unifying receiver for the Logitech unifying keyboards and mice. As you can see, it's got a Type-A connector on it. Carol was just talking about how you um converting one of these to type C. But the difficulty is this thing has got components like there on the board. Whoops, I'm off shot. This thing has got components like there on site on the circuit board itself. Like you can see the clock crystal sticks way out. Like um so it'd be a question on how much work would it take to bodge a type C connector onto this. And the reason why that might be interesting is because then you could plug it into you could plug it into the bottom of a mobile phone like this Samsung and use a Logitech unifying mouse and keyboard on the phone without an, uh, a cable sticking out the bottom and also Caradog has also got this mobile display um, which looks like this Caradog has also got this rad mobile monitor this is uh um uh, so this is a 15 inch um mobile screen that just sits back on a on a flappy fl on a flap out stand and this is fully type c this thing so it's got type c connector on that side and on that side and mini hdmi and you can power this thing from type c and you it and it can receive its display from type c so if you had a type c if you could plug this into this Type-C connector somehow, when you plug this into your phone, you've also connected uh, a Logitech unifying receiver to the phone. So that would be really cool to be able to modify this as well. But I think that's going to be significantly more work is the problem there. So, yeah. Rick Lakes with the $10 Super Chat. Thank you very much. Hello, hello. So, yeah. And just for anyone who's interested in seeing this in action, yeah. Um, I don't know if you need to sanitize that. There you go. But yes. Um, so yeah, it's on low brightness at the moment. But yeah, so you literally get a desktop layout uh, on your thing. So it's super cool. So obviously being able to connect that up would be kind of useful. Good luck without driver support. Uh, it'll work natively because the, uni the unifying receiver appears as just a keyboard and mouse. And Android has had full H HID support for keyboard and mice since long way back yeah since honeycomb yeah you can plug them you can just plug a mouse into your phone and it'll just work if you've got yeah. an otg cable yeah the, the thing I've is it's it. just, i've done it for yeah ages the trick is is just trying to find something that doesn't involve having adapter cables and dongles sticking out of your devices which is what we don't want so yeah yeah, that um, was the only reason for considering hmm. doing it. It was just because obviously it removed dongles and stuff. Yeah. Well, sorry, adapters for dongles. Yes. Yeah. It's just a case of because you can. Pretty much. 
So, all right. Well, I think I think we're going to get that. I, th I think we're going to get the um, the board we're looking at, and I don't think any of that supporting circuitry is mission critical. Um, so I think that's what we would do. So we'll go with that for now. That answers that question. The next thing we wanted to do is um, this thing has got what might be a blown LED on it. We just want to test that as well while we're while we're doing this. Uh, DIY perks maybe one yeah we, I need to go back and re-watch that DIY perks video to get some more ideas for that and just because I seem to remember his solution it works but I seem to remember looking at it going that's not very small it's not very elegant it would be interesting if there's a more elegant way of doing that yeah so yeah so we've got this what's on this board is that just that's the actual micro for the keyboard oh yeah it's got a Holtec on it that's the actual controller interesting so yeah, the actual controller is on this separate board that is just dip socketed into the keyboard. That's very cool for upgrades and stuff. Yeah. Trying so to also, out how that fits back in, I think it might. So also in theory, it means that you can just swap out the controller to anyone you want. Yeah. Which is interesting. That would be very good because you could, you, I mean, you well, you can program that to different layouts. So it means that they can produce the backboard, program these, and just click in the correct yeah. one for the region. Yeah, and so, also yeah. obviously because you've got dip switches on yeah. the back, you could swap one of those Dvorak layouts. Yeah. Say the Dvorak layout to be an ISO layout. Mm. So then you can just dip switch to ISO um, and swap your keys. Yeah. So that's quite interesting. Are there no Type C to Type A adapters? Oh, yeah, adapters exist. We just don't want to use adapters because adapters suck. That's the thing. None of this is critical. This is all just a we're, we're investigating as a can this be done? What would it look like kind of thing? Yeah, is and this... also it's yeah. just a case of it means that you don't have to have an adapter. Yeah, you can't forget or lose it because it's soldered in. Yeah, exactly that. Eh. Right. Let's um see. Uh, what was it? Caps lock. Yeah. Which is the middle. Caps yeah. lock is in the middle, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, tell you what, I'm going to... Do you want me to just hold it? I'm going to turn that around. Eh. Ow, I'm getting spiked. Eh. If you could hold it up. And uh, tell me if it... Uh, let's go with a known good first. Uh, is that on? No. Okay, let me to put it the other way around. I can never remember which way around you need to do this. Also, I can't see what the polarity of the LEDs are anyway. How about that? Yes. Okay, there we go. Right. So uh, can we tilt that toward the camera just so, let's see. So what we're doing, we want to know, um, the caps lock LED on this keyboard doesn't seem to work. So we're checking if the LED has failed or not. So I'll just uh, uh, get the focus in. Two, three, four, five. I should do it. So I've put my multimeter into diode mode. And in diode mode, if you go, if you go onto the contacts of the LED, you can light up the LED. So we can see that the LED works. So the caps lock LED does work. Yeah. So it is indeed a software problem you've got. Or the failure is somewhere else in the keyboard. Eh, there we go. Yeah. So yeah, so it's not a blown LED. So yeah, because that would have been, because you mentioned you've got the same problem with both of your code keyboards. Yeah. And that confirms that it's not just a weirdly just that specific LED has failed on both keyboards. There's something else going on with that. So, yeah. Hmm. I have no idea what that problem might be in that case. Do -do -do. So. Why wouldn't the... So why wouldn't the caps lock light work? Yeah. But numb and scroll do. Yeah. Num lock and scroll lock work, just the caps lock key doesn't work. <clears throat> I wonder if it's just a software issue where just... Um, oh, that pushes down a lot further than I thought. Uh, I wonder if it's just a software issue where... Because um, obviously Windows reports back to the keyboard if the, the keyboard doesn't know what num lock and caps lock status is. Windows uh, receives the turn on num, num lock keyboard... Windows receives the caps lock keystroke and then sends a signal back to the keyboard saying caps lock is on. Um, so if keyboard if the keyboard is not getting that signal back, then the caps lock key will not illuminate. 
So that so that might be why we're not getting caps lock because yeah. of a weird driver issue. Although I'm not sure how you would get a driver issue on a heckin' keyboard, but I'm speculating here. Yeah. What's up, Daniel? How's it going? Certainly through a billion and one Windows installs. Yeah, that's true. We should probably just plug it into another computer in here and just see if you get the same issue. You have tried it on just another computer, right? Oh, yeah, it's been an issue since I got the keyboard. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Basically. It's never worked. Uh, No, it, it did. Yeah. And then now it doesn't, Huh. as far as I'm aware. Odd. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I got these keyboards, what, four years ago? Yeah, you've had these for quite a while, I seem Five to remember. Five years ago? Yeah. I can't remember. Because at the time, they were heckin' expensive, and we were just like, what are you doing? Whereas these days, it's like, well, yeah, of course they'll sell you a keyboard that expensive, so... That yeah. legitimizes the price. Um, but yeah. Hmm. All right. I'm going to brush down. Uh, can you see my paint? There's my paintbrush. Um, we'll put this thing back together for now because there's nothing more we can do with it today, I don't think. No, absolutely. Um, however, yeah, I vote we buy that that adapter. And I vote we use that because I think we'll just solder. I think we're just going to solder these four wires onto that Type-C adapter. The only concern I have is yeah. how is it going to get mounted? Um, yeah, that's a good point. How are we going to mount that one? I suppose we, yeah, we'll have a look at, let's, yeah, let's see if, hang on a minute, before we actually reassemble this. So let's talk mounting. So uh, that, and that, that was in there like that. So this is the board we're replacing. Focus. Ah, one. Two, one, there we go. There are adapters, but you're not learning anything if you're not investigating alternatives. Yes, precisely that. Precisely that. An adapter is missing the point of what we're doing here. Um, so yeah. Uh, right, uh, so let's go back. So we want to replace this board. So the issue is if we go back to desktop, so this thing is nice and neat. This is ideal because we can just solder our four USB 2 wires onto those pads there, and we're basically done. But it's a question of how do we mount this? We don't really want to just hot snot it in because that's clearly going to fatigue over time. Hot snot is not a secure mount. Um, so, I, you know, that's, that's going to come out. So um, what other designs? So this is a lot nicer because it's got some, it's a bigger board with some screw holes on it. Although those screw holes probably aren't going to be graceful enough to line up with anything we already have. But also, this is a lot trickier to configure because we're going to have to put in a load of jumper wires to line all those pins up. Hmm. Is there... We want an adapter that's just a bit bigger, basically. There's also something like this. This looks tasty. See, something like this is also easier, and it's in a bigger board with some uh, screw lugs on it. So that could be usable. Um, that's also got some support on it. Oh, thanks. Oh, I hate websites that do this. So I'm like, okay, I want to zoom in on this picture. So hang on a sec. Let me just remove our faces for a sec. So I want to zoom in on this. So I zoom with my mouse and it just auto resizes the picture. That's not helpful, eBay. This is not helpful. Ah. Now I can't zoom back out. Hang on a sec. Reset. There we go. Right. Bring back our faces. There we go. Uh, so that that is something. Come out of that. I like the look of that. And it's got some configuration resistors on it. So we can fiddle with those. Um, what else? Is that... I don't like that one. I'm closing that one. What else exists? Those are the same things. There's another... Break out. What does that look like? Ah, oh, again, very bad pictures. But we've got something here. Uh, epoxy glue is solid. Yeah, yeah, we could just epoxy it down. That's probably good enough. You'd probably want a circuit board on that, though, just so you can get enough surface area. Yeah. Because otherwise you're epoxying the connector, and I feel like that would rip. Yeah. Um, something like this might be good because that is big enough to actually epoxy. Um, 
Like, the problem is we've got screw holes on that, but they're not going to line up with anything that exists in the case. But on the other hand, those screw holes, obviously, if you put this on the board and you fill those up with epoxy, that provides a really big anchor point yeah. for the epoxy to ha to grab hold of. Can't you make a new hole? Yeah, we could. We could just drill a small hole in the bottom of it and bolt through. Um, that's not off the table either. Mm. That's entirely possible. I think we'd actually have to order one of these boards in to see how where it lines up. But that's, that's that's ultimately what we need, though, is yeah. a case of actually having the board in hand. Yeah. To then mock it up. I do like the look of this one. Um, yeah. What's this pin out though? We've got. I don't see though what this offers over. Was it that one? Yeah. I don't see what it particularly offers over that. Just more board space, basically more more stuff to screw to mm. glue down. Something bigger that has mm. more that has something Although, we can secure. Better. The other thing you could do is you put that in there. Uh, how's that? Switching back to bench cam. <clears throat> yeah. You just put, put the board in, the in there, and then you epoxy or something like a washer or something behind it. Yeah, so and then got the, something to and then press the, up against, and then it pushes into that washer. Yeah, and that provides the surface area. Yeah, that's true. I mean, hell, failing that, we could have we could hack in, we could solder it in, and then conformal coat it with epoxy, where we literally just. Yeah, basically. Like I mean, if it works, it's never going to come out again. Yeah, basically. So that's actually a, entirely a valid option. Is the it? only thing you'd need to do is have like a little bit of card or something around it, just so it flowed underneath. Yeah. Instead of going Something like, like that. that. Yeah. Just to force it underneath and then you could make it like a little bit of um Yeah. Do you think drilling the board may short it out? Oh, we wouldn't drill holes through the board. That's why I'm looking at boards that already have holes in. We're no, talking about be... drilling a hole through yeah, this plastic. Just through this plastic. So, yeah. And then we basically put a we have a screw coming through the bottom of a screw coming through the bottom of the casing through the board and we put a little nut on top to secure it in place. However, I think just Putting in, uh, I think just putting in um, uh, desktop. There we go. I think just putting one of these in and literally just drowning the whole thing in, in epoxy would probably be good enough for America or Australia at least. No 3D print options. How does that help though? 3D print what? That's the thing. Do a saw and hot glue everything. Yeah, that's basically what I'm thinking so, to be honest. So I don't think hot glue will last, but I think epoxy would. So there was that yeah. plastic peel yeah. over a sticker. Huh. <laughs> plastic peel for a sticker. Oh, fair enough. Oh, that, that, and that, that's just showing you which way up the cable goes. But sure. It, yeah, what? That's rather unnecessary, but okay. That is super unnecessary. Today on the list of things that don't need a peel, <laughs> this little sticker that tells you which way up the cable goat plugs in had some some cellophane peel on it. That peel just got removed. Because I didn't even know it was there, and I was just like, what? Odd. Very well. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, well, I think we've got our answer. That's the wrong one. Hi. I mean, hi. That's the wrong one. There we go. There's the right scene. Uh -huh. Oh, dear. Anyway, solution. Buy a new one. No! You need USB-C data capable connector. Why would um, that not be ca data capable when yeah, it's got this, a D minus and a D plus? I was going to say this one is data capable. It's just only data capable at USB two, but we, that's all we need because it's a keyboard. It's a we, USB two keyboard. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't. Um, uh, again, just for those of you who didn't spot it, ah, boff. <laughs> what we're suggesting is the uh, so we're suggesting this as a replacement for this. So notice we've got four USB cables coming in. We've got plus D, we've got five volts, D minus, D plus, and ground. And those are going to go directly onto those pads there. So that guy is a direct replacement for what we've got. So yeah, that's I, that, I, I think we should just order that. And I think we're just going to epoxy the thing in. Yeah, basically. I also just noticed that there's a recess there. Yeah, that little divot will be perfect, I Which... think actually might be helpful. And so that's interesting. the only other thing that we've got to watch out for that might be a trap for for us players um is just if the physical hole is big enough but if it's not big enough we just get the dremel with a drill bit in and we just mill that out ever so slightly i was gonna say the dremel will be the solution yeah i was gonna say that that'll answer to a dremel so yeah 
Uh, they're cheap. Order one of each and use which fits best. That's a. I think that's a reasonable idea as well. That was yeah. possibly my suggestion. Uh, yeah, stop. Hold on. There wasn't so, there a pack of six of them somewhere? I think so. Yeah, six. Yeah, there. it's from China, so it's going to take a couple of weeks to arrive. But if we're not in a hurry on this one, are we? No. Yeah. Also, it says it's USB 3.1, supposedly, so that'll be interesting to see. Yeah, what's on the other side of that? I. Oh, that is less helpful what's... to us. Yeah, what's going on with... Yeah, that one... What are they doing? Is that power only? What's the deal with this one? Oh, so have they got anything... Oh. oh, there we go. That side shows pins. Six pins. That which is which is USB three data, isn't it? Is it six pins for USB three data plus two power? I can't remember. But is that then it? I'm I can't figure out what I'm looking at here. Because look, that's one side. We've got a capacitor and a resistor. Then that's the other side. So then what the hell was that one we just saw that had the extra breakouts on it? Oh, hold on, go back. Go oh. back to the actual listing. Oh, yeah, hang on a sec. There was a drop-down box on the listing. Yeah, they've got multiple types there, haven't I they? I think... Wasn't there? No. They, oh, no. There's, yeah, there's no I thought one... So... It was the one that had the breakouts on it there. Yeah. Wait, what? I'm so confused now. Yeah. There seem to be two different products in these pictures. Oh, one, oh yeah, also, um, uh, it's male or female. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Oh, that's not confusing at all. Good lord, that listing was not as clear as it could have been. No. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going back. Get me out of here. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, just, just those ones. The ones we've already found. It's fine. It's fine. We're done. Yeah. Goodbye. Yes. Um. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah, these breakouts for development and stuff like that really handy. So yeah. Um. Quick charge module. That's very cute. Oh, really? Yeah. Just as a side thing, that's kind of interesting that such a thing exists. I want one of that. Uh, <laughs> quick charge three, quick charge two, power delivery three, apparently. What's I want... the spec on that? I'm kind of interested. Uh, zoom. Also, apparently supports the Huawei fast charging. Uh, I hate the fact that there's a separate scroll window for the, the thing. Um, blah, 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 support, fast charge, DCP, Huawei fast charge. What's the output? Uh, output power up to 20 watts. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, 9 volt, it does 12 volt, 2 amps. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Interesting. ETC, what does ETC mean? What do you mean, etc.? Does it, it do means 15 et volts? ETC means etc. Yes, <laughs> but, like, can it do... Uh, our output automatically adjusts between 3 and 12. So, yeah, it's not etc. It's just that. Those are the settings. 5, 9, and 12. So, yeah. Oh, no, apparently it goes down to 3 volt because obviously USB charging at 3 volt is a thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Still, that's a that's a very cute little... Like, this, Sorry, this hold is... on. Scroll down. Oh, uh, uh, Keep going. Keep going. Uh, Allow a one centimeter error due to manual measurement. <laughs> yeah. A one centimeter error on a 0. 0.32 millimeter device. This... Excuse me. Well, it probably means that I mean this board might come in various shapes and sizes. <laughs> Still, that's that's a really cute little module. That you just you could stick that on your bench power supply and just instantly have quick charge output. That's just one of those like that's kind of interesting. Yeah, but yes, look up power delivery voltages. Yeah, I'd say up to 12 volts. So it's a shame it doesn't have 15 on it, but come on, it's a tiny little Yeah, I'd be board. interested to see if there is one of those that does the 15 volt power delivery. Yeah, I mean, though, yeah. Yeah, although 15 volt power delivery is getting fairly specific. I don't think any phones use 15 volts, do they? Not sure, but like... Um, the, 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 the pine cell yeah, and, the soldering, yeah. and laptops and stuff. Yeah, the problem is, though... Its output is 20 watts. Although, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I don't yeah. mean a 20 watt one. Yeah. I mean a much higher rated one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there'll be bigger ones out there. Yeah. This that's is just really I was just small wondering and if cute, you can get, which is why I found it you know, interesting. Just the breakout boards yeah. at like 40 watts yeah. or something. Because that would be interesting. I'm just, I'm, I'm very interested that they've got that power delivery compliance with an 8 pin chip. You know, 
Um, uh, compliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But intro. I don't know. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Exactly. But it's just I kind of want one. Fifteen volts for laptops. Uh, uh, citation needed. Most of the ones I've seen are twenty. Um. Yeah. But still interesting. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Cool. Yeah, it's just a side thing that I just saw out the corner of my. I lo like. There's loads of I'd cool stuff. Also, be interested in that, but the other way round. Mm. So it actually had a Type C mail on it, so you could just plug the board into the bottom of your device. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be fun to make to have one. You know, you can get the like backwards connectors effectively with the long legs, mm. so you could just slot it in like that and have it the board sit here. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. This one's an interesting auction because it comes with a plug and a socket. So that's interesting for if you're developing widgets. Widgets and doodads and thing yeah, in the Type this in AliExpress. Yeah, I mean, I will, uh, we'll, we'll see whether we're getting from, like, the thing is, I've no doubt we could probably jump on AliExpress and buy 100 of these for £5 um, but, and wait three weeks and then have 100 of them that I don't need. Or we could pay three quid and have one on Tuesday. Um, it's yeah, it, it, for the, for the amount we're paying for this, I'm not super fussed. It depends on the volume. Yeah. Exactly. We, this is a one-off, you know. So yeah, uh, if I was doing this on mass, obviously yeah, I'd absolutely be on AliExpress and looking up uh, hundred pieces worth. Um, there we go. There's a fully reverse connector. Well, almost anyway. That's the Nintendo Switch one, apparently. Uh, oh yeah, that's yeah for the console board. Intro, yeah. Hmm. Uh, yeah, oh, oh, we're getting sidetracked here. Um, what's that? That's an interesting one. I think we should just get the first one we saw. Quite frankly. Probably. Ten pieces. Three pound forty from China. Is that correct? Yeah. There that looks go. like it's the same That's one. The same it's one. just the China listing. Yeah, we get ten of for three forty one. So yeah. Um hypothetically, how much is AliExpress then? AliExpress. Like I said, I know AliExpress is cheaper, but it's also considerably more hassle and considerably slower. Uh sometimes. So yeah. Um what are we calling that? A type C. USB type C connector fourteen pin. US That's what that one says. Or oh, that one just says USB Type C breakout board. Fourteen pin. What, what, it, what does that do? What does that get us? Uh, can we find the same thing? So here's raw connectors, which we're not going for because we don't want to solder an eighteen pin connector. Because we could get a board that's pre-soldered. There we go. Ten pieces, two pound twenty three, plus one pound delivery, so three pound twenty three. Um, so yeah. We could save ourselves 20p on AliExpress. Or I could just hit buy it now on eBay. Which is what I'm going to do. So, yeah. Uh, where was the 10 pieces one? I've lost it. It's over there. There it is. Yeah. So there you go. Make sure it's female. Yeah, that's got the spade in it. So that's definitely the female connector. Um, so yes, there we go. Uh, oh, Danny, I see you are actually specifying an, another module thing. Yes. Um, yes, that's fine. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll quickly smash that in just because we were looking at those modules and that was kind of interesting. Um, what does that look like? Just out of interest. Uh, uh. I'm just looking at the end of the USB-C lead and seeing if there was any way you could conflate yeah. a USB-C lead to those. Oh, features. wow. That looks super cool. Wait, what? That's 20 Ooh, volts, man. I want one. Yeah, that's that's what we... <laughs> look at that. No way. How much, What's the output of that? Uh, it does 20 volts. What's the, what's the wattage output on that? No way that does any kind of real... Can withstand the current capacity of 20 volts and 5 amps. The working power can reach 100 watts. Yes, it can reach 100 watts. 100 watts? However... However, you have a delta fan melted to the top. <laughs> you require a blow emetron. Yeah. A hundred watts out of that? You're joking. Also, that sounds like you're trying to say Tony Stark built this in a cave with <laughs> yeah. a box of scraps. Tony Stark built this in a cave with a box of scraps. I'm not Tony Stark. 
It triggers just power delivery. Yeah. Uh, bullshit, you can get 100 watts out of that. Uh, I'm sure it, uh, it probably has I'll, the specification. I'll, I'll test to it do with it. a pencil. Yeah. Oh, Matt. That'd be actually real. Actually, sh you know, we're ordering from China anyway. Should we order one? Should we, chop should we do an AliExpress order? Put one of those in it and actually rig that up on the pine saw and blow it up. Get a couple of them. Yeah, because they're they're 80 pence each. Because also, I want I actually want one. Yeah. All right, Danny sold. Although that says yeah. decoy module. I'm not sure what oh. a decoy module is. Decoy module? What is this? What are we looking at? Hang on a sec. We could actually just read the thing. Common problem. How much current does it support? How much power does it support? No, this, this is straight, is straight through. The PD decoy is straight through. The output power is mostly in the current. This has nothing to do with this device, but only with the output capacity of your charging head. Uh, it, it is just a power delivery. It effectively fakes power delivery support for an output. So you plumb in a, uh, a five volt output or something. Yeah. And it says, this is a power delivery output. Okay, so if I hooked that up to my bench power supply... You'd, in theory, then get PD support for yeah. this. It would then negotiate the power delivery. Ah, yes. But do I have to set the voltage on my power supply to be what I want it to give? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's... These are fixed voltage, says local. Yes. Yeah. That's how. Yeah. That's why it can be so small and support so much current, yeah. because there's no actual... Like it says, it's passed through. Yeah. It's not actually handling the current. It's just negotiating the data connection. Yes. Yeah. That's kind of interesting because part of me wants to get that and you and power my pine saw from my uh, pine saw over its USB C port from my bench power supply because who will stop me? Yes. Not because that's useful in any capacity, but because it's really, really, hey, really. Hey, you funny. take it a stage further and you get a couple of those low dropout regulators. Yeah. And an XT60 connector. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, no, it can't negotiate the voltage, though. Yeah, but that's why you're using the low dropout regulators to set the voltage. Yeah. Yeah. What, and plug it into, like, a 5-cell or something like that? Yeah. No. <laughs> Just, oh. There's so... There's way easier ways of doing that. Although the problem is... I, like, I've got a gadget that would be perfect for that, but it doesn't do power delivery. You know those um, yeah. KQC things yeah. that do quick charge? Yeah. It's a shame that doesn't support power delivery. Yeah. There's probably it a version of that. It only does, like, quick charge 2. Yeah. There's it probably a version of that that does What's do... That? Uh, this one. That one. Is that a charger? What is that? Oh, it's just a charger no. balance protection board yeah. thing. Fine. I thought that was a 3 or 4 cell yeah. 2 type C. Yeah, because I... it was related to this item. Hang on a minute, I'm just gonna uh, let's see, XT60 PD uh, XT60 to power delivery output. Does such a thing exist? Um, I need to. No, it needs more. Oh, did I just spot it? You, what are you? No, it's a lipo. Oh no, that's actually a lipo. Yeah. Uh, we're we're on a complete tangent here, by the way, people. Don't we? We literally just this this is now just us just browsing stuff on AliExpress that looks interesting. Power delivery charger? No. Put in um, XT60 to USB. XT60 to USB. Power delivery. Power deliver. Whoops. Power delivery. Oh, there's the literal. Yeah, there's the old one. So we, I've got one of these. This is kind of cool. You plug in, yeah. You plug XT60 in the back from your lipo cell, and it gives you quick charge out the other side. Although this is the newer one because it does 12 volt. Yeah, I want this, but with um, uh, but with power delivery on it, basically. That would be cool. Uh, would you trust TPMs off websites like AliExpress? Yeah, sure. However. As per the start of this stream, we won't go through it all over again. I don't think you'll need one. Especially as FTPM is a thing. Yeah, especially as FTPM is a thing. So, yeah. Um, don't quote me. However, my prediction is I don't think you'll need one. Uh, ooh, what's that? That looks fun. Oh, that's the, basically the same thing, just without a case. Also with Deans, if you're an idiot. 
looking at you, Caradog. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm I'm rapidly losing interest in this. I think we should order these USB connectors. Do you want anything from AliExpress, or are we just going to buy it from eBay? No, I'll just grab it from eBay. Yeah, I'm just going to hit... Yeah, let's just eBay it. Uh, which one are we going for? Uh, where was this that? one. Oh, yeah, that one. Yep, yeah, because that gives us 10 of them. 10 yeah. of them for £3.41. Buy now. So it can go very wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wrong one. Okay, right. And uh, pay now. Log in. Right, and HDMI. Hello. There we go. Um, right, that's that. You'd probably be browsing AliExpress anyway. Yeah, oh, I could... I've got to tear myself away because I could spend hours just looking at through all of the stuff on AliExpress. The problem is, when I want to do that, when I want to look through the stuff and see if there mm. are cool bits that I want, mm. I can never think of those words. I can never come up with words to search for to find stuff. Yeah. Do you want a toothbrush? Uh, no, nah, it's fine. It's basically done now. Yeah. Unless you want to detail that anymore. But, can I yeah. offer you an egg in this trying time? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. What do you think about LGA 1151 mutant CPUs? They're basically like engineering samples. Oh and stuff. yeah, yeah. I yeah. Linus Tech Tips have done a video on this that sums them up pretty well. They're pretty hit and miss. They're they're interesting, and they're kind of you know you can look at them and be like that's kind of interesting. You might be able to build something really cheap with it, but I don't think they're worth the trouble. Um, because it's you're, it's basically a roll of the dice as to whether you'll get something that is usable as a daily driver, as yeah. it were, or usable in any kind of like like because like if you end up with something where you've got to have a stack of books holding it down into the into the board and stuff like that, it's just like yeah, it works, but it's not something you can just slap in and use. Um, I I don't think it's it's not something I would recommend. Like if you're if you if you're curious and you want to tinker with something, then you could buy one and be like, "Hey, this is kind of cool. I got an i7 for forty quid." But um, I don't think that, that it's something you'd actually want to have as in in. I don't think it's something you'd actually want to use as a built computer. <clears throat> so yeah, yeah. Although there were some. Um... It literally said mail. Uh... Picture had the spade in it. Hang on a minute. Uh, check out. Let's just roll back. That's a female connector. It's got the spade in it. I think uh, it's because people get confused between male and female. Um, a cable will plug into that because it's got the spade in the middle of it. Don't trust picks. I only trust pics because if the picture is wrong, then it's missold. That's how I. That's how I do it. Um, I, I always go by what the picture is. Yeah. Because the, um, as far as I'm concerned, the picture is what you're selling, and if it shows up and it's not what the picture is, I'll sell it. I'll send it back, and I'll say that's not what the picture said it was. Um, because yeah, the, the in I know that's what they're saying it is. It says male there. However. The picture is what I say. That that picture, that's what I'm expecting to, to arrive in the post. If that doesn't arrive in the post, I'll get my money back and I'll say, that's not what you said it was. Yeah. Basically. So, yeah. Uh, your Pine 64 desk, your Pine, pa your Pine Power desktop arrived on Thursday. Do I have a discount link to Pine? I don't. I need to talk to the Pine guy and say, hey, can we do something that I keep forgetting to? Um, but yeah, the Pine desktop is really cool. I use mine every day. I've got it plugged in over on the other bench. It's a really cool bit of kit. Um, they also yeah. do a gallium nitrate. Oh, I've just realised... Hang on a sec. Sorry, I've just realised that when I was ranting then, I didn't actually have the thing up. Uh, display capture. There we go. Um, yeah, when I was saying, this is what we're buying. Here's the picture again, just for posterity. As you can see, it's got the spade in the middle. The picture is of the correct connector. However, it's incredibly debatable because... You could call that male because it has a bit in the middle, which is male. However, 
a plug a, a cable will fit inside of that connector which makes it the female connector so yeah um whatever anyway uh what were you about to say yes yes fair enough say. absolutely uh right okay indubitably indubitably uh let's carry on do you want to do anything else with this before we no, reassemble it i just nope. want to reassemble it yeah we're putting it back together again good all right uh let's see uh why is caradog so low down <laughs> Because I don't have a single good chair in this entire shop. Uh, I bought new stools. You guys remember the, the, the stool buying. Um, they have lasted about six months. And now they've begun to squeak. So yeah, there's that. Uh, there we go. Uh, let's see, quick question. Acer Swift 3 laptop. HDMI cable connected, machine shut off. It's dead, Jim. Uh, reset the battery using the hole on the bottom of the laptop and it charges. Power button push, nothing. Mm. The Acer Swift 3... What does holding the power button for a while do? Does it give you any warning? Yeah. Does it give you any flashing lights saying that there's an error or anything like that? Because sometimes you have to hold it down for like 30 or 40 yeah. seconds for it to do like an SMC reset. I'm just going to grab something because I want to check if it's what I think it is. Oh, that very much just rests. If it's a Swift... Uh, this one says it's an E3, but... Uh, this one's an Aspire, but... Um, no, is it one of these... Ignore the fact that this doesn't have a panel in it, but is it is something like this you've got. That's an Aspire, but that shape chassis... Is it one of them? Because... I've got, like, a pile of these that all have just a phantom death where they just don't do anything. No short circuits, just dead motherboard, just stone dead. In I like, I've had, like, a half a dozen of them that are in my breaker pile that have just come in from customers where it's just dead. And, yeah, never got to the bottom of it. It seems to be that they're just, yeah. I, I have a suspicion it's the same thing on with the Swift and the Aspire. It's just the same laptop under a different branding and they're just crap they're just crap that's the, all I've, that's the only conclusion i've managed to come to these are vicious clips heavens i found some more <laughs> oh my god yeah i wasn't joking Urgh. yeah that's an aspire v11 that's touch but again same chassis the first one I showed was an Aspire E3, which e. is a non-touch, but same chassis. This one is... Uh, oh, this one's also Aspire. This one's a V5 touch. That one's got an A4 in it, so yeah. But again, just, yeah, Phantom Death. So yeah, basically these, yeah. and Oh, that one's got a slightly different chassis. If I show you the shape on the side of that... You can see the blue one is a slightly different shape. But again, they're all based on the same platform, I think. And again, they just seem to be a bit crap. That's all I've been able to determine, I'm afraid. And that's just three of them. I'm pretty certain I've got another three of them in another pile somewhere. Ugh. No, there's literally nothing left here. <laughs> Smith ordered a pine salt standard delivery. Should be here by 2023. <laughs> yeah. Have you got um? What are you after? I know some captain tape or something. Uh, yes. Just so I can tape this. So it doesn't oh, right, get lost. Yeah. Because obviously the standoff is. Broke. Standoff is killed. Yeah. Uh, where is my captain tape? It is. Where is my cap? Oh, there it is. How are we doing for time? Oh god, it's 20, 20 past. Have we? Yeah, we're at two and a half hours. Yeah, I think we're. Gonna, I think we'll start wrapping up in a minute. We'll go through the chat again in a sec, and then I think we'll wrap up because we've kind of we've done our objectives.
That's horrible. Why? I don't know. This all game may get pulled apart next week. That's true. The week after. There we go, it lives there now. So that's not it. True that. As long as it doesn't interfere. True that. Ugh. I need to watch more electronics. Someone would have fixed that in an hour. It wasn't our objective to fix it. So, yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. When am I doing a PSU a reparation on old PSUs? I probably won't because power supplies are harder than they look. Um, and I don't know enough electronics engineering to diagnose power supplies. Everyone always says, oh, it's the capacitors, it's the capacitors. I've taken apart three dead power supplies and it's not the capacitors on any of them. Um, because every now and then I try and start a video to talk about dead power supplies. And I go, maybe it's the capacitor. It's never, it's not always the capacitors, basically. Oh, for the Acer. Yeah. The thing is, Mr. Guru, is it's got an A4 in it. It's a dual core A4 that probably boosts to 1.2 gigahertz. Who cares, basically? You know, it's, it's yeah. Just, that's the problem. Uh, yeah. But it kind of leads back into me saying about the minimum specification yeah. for OEMs on Windows 11 wasn't high enough. Yeah. Because it still allows for machines where you're like, I don't care about fixing it. Yeah. It's not worth fixing. Exactly that. Like, and it sounds really, it sounds heartless and it sounds cruel and it sounds arrogant to say it. But that's the fact, you know, like... Because the cost to repair on that is going to be £100. Yeah. Maybe hundred and fifty pound. That's right. Even and if you're charging reasonably cheap for board repair. Yeah. Or buying a brand new one, it's two hundred. Yeah, like your board repair cost should not be less than eighty pounds. And I'm in a rural area, so it's low around here. Um, so it's a case of okay, well, you know, we're going to charge eighty quid to fix to fix a netbook, um, but and if you can do it in an hour as well. If you're good enough to be able to fix it in an hour, you should be fixing much more expensive things mm. like MacBook Pros, where you can charge £200, £300 for the repair and it yeah. still be economical. Yeah. And you could be making two or three times the amount of money. You know, it doesn't make sense to fix them. That's the thing. Yeah. They're ju it's just e-waste. That's the problem. And, you know, as I said, you're absolutely right. I'm sure there's people out there that can fix them in an hour and power to them. You know, I absolutely agree. You know, it's it's a great display of talent, but it's also a case of there are easier ways to make money. Yeah. And that's the thing is, you know, like at the, the at the end of the day, I'm in business to make money. I'm in yeah. business to earn money and pay my bills. So I want to do what is the most efficient way to earn money. That's the thing. Yeah, absolutely. If I why do I still have them? I still have them because I'm awful because I'm awful and I hoard dead things. <laughs> But also a case. I'm a of terrible thing. person. That's why I've got them. It's also a case of when someone comes in and says, "Oh, I've got this dead thing. Will you take it?" You say yes. Yeah. Because adding a single extra laptop to a pile of stuff you're already e-wasting makes no difference. Yeah. And one out of ten times, you'll find something that's at least interesting. Yeah. You're kind of that's going, oh, exactly that's it. interesting. When people come in with dead stuff, or when I'm binning dead stuff, you know, I always say yes because while most of the time they'll come in with a box of just trash and you'll be like, well, that was a mistake. Now I've got to get rid of this. But also every now and then when they come in, they come in with something that's actually worth keeping. I got a MacBook Air over there that someone gave me the other day. They said, oh, do you take dead lap? Do you take old laptops? And I'm like, yeah, sure. They brought it in. It's a 2012 MacBook Air. It's got the MagSafe One connector on it. So it's a really old one. Mm -hmm. However, perfectly, perfectly functional MacBook Air, which I'm now using as a data recovery machine. So, you know, it was what, but <sighs> it's just old. That's the only thing that's wrong with it. It's just old. Um, but yeah, that's mad. That's just it. They, they bought new MacBooks and they're getting rid of that one. So, yeah, free MacBook Air. Yeah. And yeah, as I say, it is an old model. I think it probably doesn't run anything higher than High Sierra and it's got four gigs of RAM, yeah, which means it's a bad user experience. Um, but, but uh, uh, yeah, it's a case that still. It's I will free. call you back in a moment. Yeah. Because we'll be finishing up soon. So, yeah. Uh, boards are very useful for parts. Yeah, True. that's just it. And I've got them out the back, maybe. So, yeah. yeah we'll but, see. yes, at some point, I'm sure I'll force Graham to actually e-waste some stuff. Uh, yes. And suddenly free up half a shop again. Yeah. Yeah. 
I've got to e-waste a lot of stuff anyway, just because all the trash from the old shop is coming in here now, which I didn't want to do, but because of complicated reasons that I won't go into now, I need to do. So, yes. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I think that is us. Yeah, we're going to get out of here because um, we're kind of done. There's, We can get into more stuff, but I don't want to run late. I'm hungry and my sister is calling me going, have you got your COVID jab yet? And I'm going to be like, no, but I'm working on it. And by I'm working on it, I mean I haven't done any work on it. But apparently there's walking places you even, can do now. Even though I've chased you. Yeah. Apparently there's walking places, so apparently I can just drive somewhere and just do a walk in and be like, yep, please stab me, and they will do that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you have to pay for someone to come and collect recycling yeah. for electronics in the majority of cases. A lot of places you can drop stuff off for free. Yeah, if you know where to go or if you call up a couple of places and say, hey, I've got e-waste, um, I, I, I know a place where they literally just say, yes, there's a skip outside our premises, just dump it in there. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I can basically just go and fly tip into their skip. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's how we do it. So, yeah, that's good. Mm. We are done. We are done. Right. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Um, yeah, we did Stuff what we set things. out to do. We did Absolutely. what we set out to do. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I hope you guys found it interesting. We will be back next week with something. I've no idea what. We'll actually have to think of something. It won't be put when we actually get these USB ports. That's going to take uh, that's going to take three weeks because that's coming in from China. Um, however, if that goes well, there'll be a video about it probably in a month. Yeah, and then anyone who saw this one will be able to go. Ah, I saw the two guys talk. I saw the podcast where they were planning that one. Um. But yes, uh, past that, we'll be back next week with something. Uh, I will also be online uh, tomorrow evening on my Twitch channel playing Deus Ex on that XP rig that we built. Yes. Um, so that will be over on my Twitch, which is HTTPS twitch.tv slash Nethisam. Did I get that right? I did. I am uh, so pleased you know your own name. Yeah. So I'll be playing Deus Ex on my Twitch channel tomorrow at 7 p.m. UK time. Goodbye, everyone. Build a Pentium 2 slot retro machine. I need to do my Pentium 1 build. Uh, I got reminded that that was a thing the other day because it got forgotten in the move. However, I've got all the parts for my Pentium 166 build with a genuine Voodoo 1 accelerator card in it. Uh, suggestion for next week, Windows Insider build. Um, can do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because when, when did you say it was getting pushed out? 28th, I think. 28th. 29th, 30th, what? which is like two or three days' time. Yeah, that'll, that'll be, definitely be done by next week. You know what? Sure. We'll, next week we'll have something running the Windows 11 Insider build, and we'll have a look at it. So which one of us is going to go into it blind? I would say me, because I can't be bothered. Um, could, like, could put it on an SSD or something so we can just plug it into something in here. Um, sure. and yeah, and we'll do that. Um, but yeah, we'll sort something out, and we'll we'll have a look at it. As I say, I'm I don't know how much I care about the insider build, but then well, yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be the first yeah. official look at it. So, it's, yeah. the, it's the only th it's the only thing that's going to incentivize me to actually look because at the moment I'm interested in the discussion of Windows 11, but I have zero interest in actually downloading it on something. Yeah, I don't care. The only the only way that I'm going to care enough to look at it is if we're doing it for the podcast. Yeah, so, so we'll do that. So yeah, yeah, let's do it. Nice cool. pointy hat, indeed. Absolutely. And yes, epic nineties box. That's right. Right, thank you everyone. We're getting out of here. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week. I have enjoyed this conversation in English. Bye everyone. Goodbye. Until next time. Ta ra. Uh, where the hell is the YouTube? There it's it is. There. It's right there. I, I had to do a lot of alt tabbing then. Goodbye. Good lord. End Goodbye. Farewell. Or